There we go. Hello, everyone. I think we're live, hopefully. Okay. Let's see. It looks like audio is good. I think we're good. I'll wait until you guys let me know for sure. Um, so today we're going to be working in ink tents, and my frogs are going to be talking. Uh, we're working in ink tents. So my main goal for today is to get as much as possible lined out. So we can see it's already drawn out, and I drew this out with the water-soluble graphite. The reason that I do that is that water-soluble graphite, it's not going to leave pencil lines. Those pencil lines, when I add water, they're going to mix in, whereas with a regular graphite pencil, you're going to see those lines. So if it was during something like here where we've got more... Um, more of the graphite, like where that's gonna be more yellows and oranges, those graphite lines would show through those colors. So that's why usually, there are exceptions, but more often than not, when I work with ink tents, I do everything with water-soluble graphite. Javier just said, hi, we can hear you, thank you. Um, I think all my moderators decided they had actual lives today, I'm not sure. I know Nick was gonna be late, so, you know, behave yourselves. Um, or if they're not here, does that mean we get to be like, we, we can be bad and not have them tell us to behave. So, okay, let's grab some paper towels. So when I work with the ink tents, definitely going to need some paper towels. Now, you may have seen the video recently where I was talking about with colored pencil blending and how you need to use Viva paper towels for that. That is not the case for anything where you're not using OMS. So in this case, regular like Bounty, whatever your normal kitchen paper towels, like that are more papery. We don't really want cloth-like. I don't find it to be absorbent enough. So just regular paper towel is going to work great here. I've taped my artwork. You can't really see. I've taped it down with black. Um, this is a pH neutral tape. So that is going, not going to leave as much, like all tape will leave some residue. So I, if it's going to leave residue, I want one that's going to be pH neutral, not one that's going to leave bits of something that will yellow that paper over time. Um, yeah, now if I said no moderators, I to cause trouble. <laughs> Hi, Alicia. Um, so that is um, what I've done here. And I've taped this down. This is the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. So I typically... I've actually, now that I think about it, I've only ever used watercolor paper, hot press watercolor paper with Intense. Always loved it. I haven't tried it yet on watercolor canvas. I have some from Fredericks I want to try. But anyway, um, this is the one that came in the blocks, but I'm finding with the arches, I'm finding with all of watercolor blocks, I don't like the block. I find that it doesn't stay like, it, it warps really bad. But then when you use a hairdryer to dry it back in place, it's not drying flat. I've had too many issues lately with that. And I'm finding if I take it out, tape it to a board, when I dry it, it dries flat in a way. I don't know if it's because the tape overlaps so much of the paper, but I'm finding I can get my paper to dry back in shape. I'm not having to stretch it. I'm not having to do anything. It just dries in shape if it's taped down. When I try to work out of the watercolor pads where are blocks, it's not doing that. It's not going back into shape. Um, so, oh, uh-oh, Nick is kind of here where we have to behave. Um, but I, I'm just fine. I don't know. That just let me know if that's been your experience. But for me, with those ink, where with the arches block, and I, did I have some with Fabriano? I don't remember. But I'm not having it hold its shape. And then the blocks are falling apart, really. Like, I'm having some weird stuff. So I'm not, for how much you pay for those blocks, I'm not finding them to be super useful unless you are like, out doing plein air painting, that would be convenient. But here, I'm at home, I'm in my easel, I'm just gonna take it out and tape it down to the board and it really does hold its shape better. And it's not that the paper is bad, I'm just getting better results with the paper drying completely, completely flat, no matter how much water I add, as long as it's taped to the board and not trying to paint in the watercolor block as intended. So it's kind of an interesting thing there. Um, uh, what else do I wanna go over before we say, oh, so if you were watching this and you're like, wow, you talk too much about your dogs, oh, the, my, my hands laying down there, or your frogs or whatever. All I care about is the painting lessons. That is what Patreon is for. For as little as four, I have to do my speech. This is how I pay the bills. Plus it's a good deal for you guys. For as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer tutorials. I have seven years now. Can you believe it? Seven years I've been doing Patreon. Seven years of content available immediately when you sign up. I've been doing a new one every week with very few, like maybe a couple times a year I have to take a week off. Like it is rare. So you've got over 300 videos immediately when you sign up and you get a new one every single week. I work in multiple mediums and those are just your straight lessons. So if you are looking for just good straight lessons, that is going to be a better fit for you. 
through for these, just as a warning, we chat, we talk about everything. You guys set the pace, as long as it's not politics, because no one needs that headache right now. So we just chat and have fun. Um, and there we go. Hobby artist said, doing this in watercolor pencils on cold pressed watercolor paper. That I want to see what yours comes out like. So you're going to layer yours because you are working in watercolor. You're not going to do this quite how I would. In your case, I would probably just start with the background and, and getting that in. But for ink tents, because ink tents is permanent when dry, we're going to start lining everything out so that when we, we paint our background, we don't lose that. But it ink tense is a little bit harder to get your background smooth just because if it starts to dry, it doesn't reactivate like watercolor does. So with watercolor, you can take your time, you can go around your edges, you're not gonna lose your lines. For us with ink tense, unless we're gonna use a masking fluid, which I have, I hate masking, it, masking fluid works, but man, is it its own headache. So we want to get some lines in with ink tents first so that when we go and blend our background, all of these lines stay in place. Uh, let's see, Nellie Beck said, how are the shoe and bad cow doing today? They're good. I, the lawn, so our lawn is dormant. Um, let me find my brushes while I tell this story. The lawn has gone dormant, but you still want to water because we have issues with foundations here in Texas, our dirt and whatever. So it was watered last night and I look, Gibson is begging me right before the stream to go out. I'm like, fine, go out. What's he do? He's doing laps as fast as he can, but the, because the grass is dormant and it just watered, like you're making mud holes that are going to last all winter long. So yeah, I had to bring him back in the house. Um, Karen said, this is so cute. Talk all you want. That's why we watch the live streams. Yeah, that's what I figure. I mean, it's, it's fun because it's a time that I get to hang out with you guys and chat. And if you've ever emailed me or you messaged me, also, I want to throw this out there and I need to post this on Patreon too. If over the last several years you have messaged, like left a comment on a Patreon video and I never answered the question, I never saw it. So uh, somebody asked a question yesterday on an old, old video asking, did she ever answer this question to anybody or is she just ignoring? I had no idea they were there. So I'm now, Patreon's pretty good as far as I know. I get notifications when someone comments. I didn't used to. I never saw them. I don't know if they were just going to spam. I had no, like I'm looking through this going, holy crap, these are questions from five years ago. I never saw them. So if you've ever asked me a question on Patreon and I didn't get back to you, chances are I just didn't see it. But anyway, um, so it looks really bad when I'm going through that going, holy crap, these are questions that never got answered. And I can answer them now. I don't even know if those people are still patrons. But anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, this is a, like, I get to answer questions and have time to do so where I normally am like nonstop working. Um, let's see. Janet said, I love your doggies and bird. By the way, did you get some rain last night? I'm in Irving. I don't think so. I didn't see any. And my sprinkler said, I think my, I have the, what is it, ra, ra, uh, ratio, ratio, ranchio, I don't know, something EO. Um, it's hooked up to my sp sprinkler system. By the way, if you have like a normal ink bird sprinkler thing, this is what you should ask for for Christmas. The ranchio, ranchio, hold on, I will tell you what it is because it's on here. This is the most convenient and it saves so much water because it lets, like it knows if it rained, it won't run that night. Like, so you set your schedule and if it knows it's too windy or it's going to rain, it just, it lets you know that it's, it's like something rain, uh, sprinkler activation skip or whatever. Like it knows your local weather um, and what's going to happen and whether or not it should even run. Like it is, I love this thing. So it's definitely a good Christmas gift if anyone needs it. It is the loading taking forever. Um, does it have the actual name of the product on the app? It doesn't say it. It just has it at what I named mine. Huh. Actually, I can look at my emails because it also emails me when it's going to. Is it Ranchio? That's not it. Um, let's go rain skip. That's usually when I get the email. Yeah. R-A-C-H-I-O. It is, it will save you in the long run so much money by not running. Like my neighbor, the Inkbird one has a feature on it that, or it like had a sensor and I don't even know if it's still, I think we took it down. It was on the back fence and if it knew it was raining, it was supposed to not run. It still did all the time. And so you'd have to manually go in. And the problem was every time I would manually change things, it would keep, like if power went out or whatever, it kept resetting itself. I had so many problems with that thing. We hooked this one up and you do, it also separates it by zone. So it knows like, okay, this area needs more water than this area. So this area runs longer than this area. It's frigging amazing. I love this thing. I got it like 
Actually, I got it for Christmas. So that would have been probably two years ago. I think I spent my Christmas money on it. I want to say it was like around the $200 range, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I don't remember. I probably got it on sale. No, I got mine through Costco. So um, yeah, it, you could set it up by zones and tell it like, like there'll be times where I'll put down a fertilizer and have to tell it like, I just need to run it in that zone that I put the fertilizer down just to wet the thing. Or there's this humichar stuff I put on the grass sometimes to help the, the soil. And you just run that zone. It is amazing. I love it. Anyway, um, where were we? Sarah said, maybe you could do the same painting in ink tents and watercolor or pencil side by side so you could point out the differences in how you would work in the two mediums. Sarah, I freaking love that idea. Hold on. I'm taking a photo of that because that is a genius idea because they are like there's so much that's similar and so much that's not. Thank you, Sarah. I love it. Definitely going to be doing that. Like, oh, I got goosebumps because I'm excited and because I'm how do I get goosebumps over the most ridiculous things? Because you gave me a good idea for a painting video and now I have goosebumps. Something's wrong with me. Um, Clark Finer said, getting that package together for you. I want to get it at mailed out with my Christmas packages. Hopefully it'll let red before Christmas. You need my little pony washi tape. Yay! What do I what do you do with washi tape though? I'm gonna need some tips from you to know what how to best use the fancy my little pony washi tape. Okay, getting started. So I'm just gonna take a purplish color. I don't even care if it's like it's just well, you can't even see it looks black on that. Um, it's just a purpley color. And I want to show you before I get started exactly what I'm going to be doing. So let's get a sheet of paper. I've not already done this one. Here we go. This will work. So what you want to do, I'm going to take my paintbrush. And I'm, I'll be doing this off camera, but I'm going to show you the one time like how I'm actually wetting this. Just use it like a pan watercolor. I'm just taking a water and I'm wetting it and lifting the color there. And now I will be able to paint with it. And that's actually a really pretty purple color. It's a little bit more violet on my end than what you guys are seeing. I may have to adjust the color. But the point is that I want a violet. It could be purple, it could be violet. This is what I'm gonna use to line things with. Now, if I had certain subjects, um, like the owl, you saw the, well, if you saw the owl that I did last, uh, what was that, Tuesday's video. I lined that with black because black made sense. There was a lot of black in that one. This one, there is not a lot of black. It wouldn't make sense for me to line everything with black. Purple, however, will work. Let's see, we've got purples, we've got browns. We've got a few warmer tones in there and then the purple. So that's what I'm gonna be lining things with. And I'm gonna be using, this one is a number one synthetic hog hair liner brush. I may switch up to a round. We'll see how long this takes. It may be too time consuming with this brush. Uh, Eo said, hi, Lisa, here's a random question. If you were a millionaire, what would you do or buy? Oh, a farm so my husband could have a llama. Or not a llama, an alpaca. He really wants one. Maybe a horse and somebody to clean stalls and take care of food and vet bills. Yeah. I love the idea, too, of having some sort of a class for kids. Like, not kids, but like teenagers, especially. And especially like low-income teenagers. Like, I look back at, I think... I think a lot of us do this. We look at how we grew up as kids and it's like, how could someone have helped us or made us even happier or set us up really well? Um, oops, I need to zoom in. I can't see anything. And I wish that there were lessons at the time. And there may be now, I should have, by the way, glassine under my hand, but you know, ink tense, not super white vest anyway on all of these colors. So whatever, I'm not gonna worry about the archival quality and I'm just gonna rest my hand on this. But I think it would be cool to have some sort of class where kids could come, especially if it was a way to do low income kids that their parents couldn't otherwise afford lessons or classes or sport, you know, that sort of thing gets expensive. So I think that would be a really cool thing. But see, and I say be, what I would be a millionaire and I guess that would be because I wouldn't then be working as much, but I don't, wouldn't want to do the not do videos like there's no way I could do both. So maybe fund somebody else teaching kids and providing them with the art supplies. I, re I like I, I really have always loved the idea of doing that. I don't know how you make that happen, but I like it. But I would really like the focus to be, and I say kids, but I don't mean kid kids. I mean like 12 and up, 12, the teenager age. Because the kids, kids, like little ones, they should have fun with art, but they're also not like going to learn a whole lot. It's not going to stick as much. They're just, they're having fun. It's more craft time. Whereas once they hit about 12, 13, that's when kids seem to start really um, having a bit more control. Like art starts making more sense to them. So I think that would be really cool. 
So those would be my things. I would buy a farm, there would be a side thing, and I don't know because how that would work location-wise, but like a side thing with a little art school for kids to come and all the supplies would be there for them. So they didn't have to, like their parents wouldn't have to go buy stuff even for them to take the class. I like it. Gypsy Heart said, soon I will have you joining my great medium adventure. <laughs> I'm making a video about it soon so people can do it too. Yeah, that's been fun to watch. So if you haven't, haven't seen Gypsy Heart, she's been making a video where she's doing the same painting. My, I don't know if you can see it. I have an apple, no, it's not the real thing. It was my apple like um, oil painting lesson. She, she didn't copy my lesson, but that's the same reference photo we used. Great reference photo. So she's doing that same photo in every medium. So it's really cool. I normally only do things when I'm comparing them, but and it's not even a, a difference of medium. It's more like the difference between, um, oh my God, the amount, I'm getting spam calls are just, it is so insane how often they are, like at least once an hour, usually twice an hour. And if I don't block it right away, they just keep calling back. So annoying. But anyway, um, where was I going with that? Yeah, normally when I do the same thing twice, it's like comparing two different colored pencils, not really comparing two different mediums. One I wanted to do too was comparing watercolor pencils to ink tints or watercolor pencils to colored pencil was when I started that project and I never finished it. It was one that I was doing for Faber-Castell. I don't even know what happened with Faber-Castell. I was supposed to do a bunch of videos for them. That's what they sent me that box for. Like it was in exchange for the videos I was going to do. And I started doing them, but the person who was doing it, like who was heading up the project, she wouldn't answer, like she wasn't giving me a lot of information on what they wanted me to do. So I would do it and I don't think it was what they were looking for. And I'm like, okay, give me some guidance. Like, how do you want this video formatted? Like they gave me some files that didn't make sense. And I'm like, I don't know how to use that file. Um to use as the entry intro, but I'm like, can you show me an example of what you want it to look like? If you can show me that, I can make that happen. But the files were like weird. I don't even know what, remember what they were. I was like, that's not a program I use. So, but then she left, like, and then she said, well, here's your new contact. And I, I never heard from him. So that's why I never did a bunch of stuff. And I feel like I still owe that company because they sent me all of those supplies in exchange for the videos, but the person who was leading up that project left and then I never, it was very, and it was right about the time I was moving. So things were getting really hectic and I just never like, yeah, I don't know what, what that was. But anyway, I started, the point of that story was I started one where I was comparing colored pencil to watercolored pencil and I was going to do the same project twice. I did the colored pencil one, I believe, I think it's over on Patreon now. I'm like, well, if they're not going to use it, I'll use it. But I never did the other one. Um, Sarah makes, oh, come back, Sarah. Sarah makes art said, I took some informational classes for, in my old hometown and the school and the school, and they didn't even accept my students younger than 16. Yeah, I mean, there's certain classes or certain skills that I definitely, as a teacher, I mean, I've taught all sorts of ages. And I really found with the little ones, you want them to have fun. Like you don't wanna discourage them. And if you start getting too picky, like, no, hold a brush this way, no, do that. They're not having fun. And even if you work with them on being precise, it doesn't seem to matter. I've never seen it really matter. I've had like two students over the years who started at 10, or I think one little girl was nine. Her mom lied to me about her age to get her in the class. Um, I'd be mad about it, except I understand why she lied because she knew her daughter was so advanced for her age. And she was, she was, this kid was amazing. She, and that is rare. But this little girl was awesome. She, she took classes with me for a while. And her mom, first her mom admitted that she was younger. And she's like, but what if I take the class with her? Because I was basically like, I'm not babysitting. It can't, like adults don't like when there's a kid in the class and we're babysitting. And I've had that happen way too many times when I was teaching. So she said, I'll take the class with her. So she did for a while. And then she just was like, okay, I'm not going to keep taking the class. Like she pretty much knew I had figured out at this point the kid was amazing and could focus and that was the problem that I had with a lot of the littler ones they didn't really focus well when it came to art like I would give them instruction like okay you're going to do this and that should have kept them busy for a good 10 20 minutes I turn my back and they okay done and I'm like there's not no um so that was a little bit of a challenge and it's funny because it's not like that with teaching little ones on everything like music you want to start them at like four ideally so there's something in the brain with art that most kids there it's not till they hit 12 it's like something turns on and they're like oh oh this makes sense now so I don't know if it's the patient I don't know and it's weird because music uh, you know how different that is where you want to start really young with them then and they can be amazing musicians very young 
but with art, it's very rare to have a child who can really follow those directions and it makes sense. It happens, it's just very uncommon. Uh, Shana said, I finished work at 1830, Monday through Saturday. I feel so blah. I'm signed up to Patreon, but I can't seem to get myself to follow the tutorials. I really want to improve, but I lack the drive. You're exhausted is what's wrong. Like that's, that's really hard. One of the things that you can do is set, and I've got to do this for myself. And I keep saying, I'm going to start practicing violin. I have such good intentions and I want to, it's not a matter. And I think this is something that it's kind of misunderstood by a lot of people that are like, well, if you're not doing it, then you don't want to, maybe it's not for you. And it's like, no just getting started that it's so normal oh i'm missing part the top of his tail where, where did that go um oh there it is that's the tail right there so yeah getting just getting started if you can set like okay i know from this hour to this hour like even if it's 10 minutes break it down into a tiny little chunk chances are once you get started you'll want to go a little longer but break yourself down into a tiny little chunk and work from that but like schedule it and oh my god look hey more spam calls I am so glad though that I never changed my number from California because I know if I'm getting calls from California, it's spam. So it's not even like I have to remotely answer it. That would be a lot harder if it was like local because you'd be like, is that my doctor? Is it like I ever go to a doctor? Uh, but we're gonna pretend I'm, I'm take care of myself. Um, let's see. Snow said, I'm not sure if the teaching young kids has something to do with tactile nature because I did start piano lessons early, like six, and I had patience but didn't have the same for art. Yeah, it's very odd. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure because typically I wouldn't say art has anything to do with, like a lot of people think it's a hand-eye coordination and it's like, no, that's not really how art works. But maybe it is something like that with kids. I mean, you watch when they write, they really struggle to make a lot of the letters to begin with. So maybe, I'm not sure. But it's really weird, though, because they can still write comfortably at age 10 and it's legible. And until there is something about that 12, 13 age limit, all of a sudden they are able to do work just as good as if I started with an adult. It's not even like they're behind because they didn't paint for years. Like they will enter that class and be just as good as anyone else. It is the most bizarre thing. Um... How did I start teaching? Was it just the experience of being an artist or did you study something extra specifically for teacher teaching? So it was kind of funny. It wasn't intentional. I was working in an animal hospital and my goal I had set for myself and I'm stubborn. Once I decide I'm doing something, I'm going to make it happen. I wanted, I didn't want to work as a, a, at an animal hospital. I didn't, that's not what I wanted to do for my career. I wanted to be an artist. I don't care if that's teaching. I don't care if it's selling art. Better yet, let's do both. Uh, and teaching was never my initial goal. My goal was just to sell art, but really just to make money as an artist and not have to work at an animal hospital. That was my main thing. And so I was going to an art show. I, I used to um, show my work, anyone in Southern California, Pomona, or the Pomona Arts Colony. I don't know if that's still a thing, but it was back then. So this would have been the late 90s. I was working... Um, at a vaccine clinic and on the way home I needed to stop by like I was trying to stop by an Aaron Brothers I had to get a frame for a painting that was going to be hung in the gallery that night and I missed the turnoff for Aaron Brothers and then I saw a Michaels so I just pulled into that Michaels and it's funny because it wasn't even the Michaels in my town but like for whatever reason I started working in one way further away from me but that's the one I went into so when I went in they had a sign teach classes and you'll make all this money and blah 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 and I was I started talking to the cashiers and like oh the teachers make so much money it's like anything else you have to build a following it does not start that way so my first lessons I think I was charging two dollars and fifty cents for a two-hour class <laughs> that's how long ago this was um, and then I raised it to five dollars and eventually it ended up being twenty dollars like over the next 15 20 years like it took a long time to get to that point but yeah that's how i started it wasn't even intentional my goal was never to like i didn't think oh i'm gonna become a teacher it was just i walked in and they're like hey you can teach classes and i showed them my work and they're like yeah you can do this too and that's how it started I wouldn't say I was the most amazing teacher to start with or anything, but one of the things that helped too, I was teaching preteens. And you had to learn how to word things in a way that people can understand. It, one of the things that I saw happen, there were artists who were amazing artists, but it was harder for their students to follow along because they used terminology that didn't make sense. Like 
it's kind of like learning like what plants you like and everyone's using the scientific name and you're like okay you want to learn that but right now i don't know what that means like that's actually latin right now what is that um so I worded things, you know, when you're working with, with young, and I was working with adults too, but I had a lot of, of preteens. Like one would come and she'd bring her friend and then she got her friends going. So there, were, there was a large group of them that all knew each other um, in the beginning. And they, trying to get them to understand things. And the goal was to have them leave with something they had fun with, that they learned from, that they were, you know, improving, that sort of thing. Um, some of the parents were really picky, wanted to see that improvement too. They get mad when their kids were screwing around in class and weren't like imp showing improvement. But anyway, because they, you know, you get a bunch of teenage girls together and they're going to spend more time talking than painting. But anyway, moral of that story is you had to learn how to word it in a way that made sense because you could tell when you're working with them, they'd look at you like, the heck are you talking about? That makes zero sense. So I'd have to learn to reword things. And I think that's why I can teach so well on YouTube now is I, I learned, like I was in person watching them look at me like, what? Um, so you learn to word things and you have to start learning how, when you're teaching, how to describe what it is you're doing. One of the things that happens a lot is you know what you're doing, but how do you put it in words that make sense to somebody else? Like how do you describe that type of brushstroke or how do you describe what the like what are you trying to get them to do if they don't know what you want them to do what their end goal is supposed to be that is you know obviously very challenging so yeah that's how I got started teaching it was never like I want to become a teacher but when I walked in and I was like here's a way I could make money as an artist I'd much rather do that than work at vaccine clinics so that was yeah it worked out really well and it was really good practice for me. My own artwork improved so much in doing that because you're not like when you learn to paint on your own, you're, lear you're, you're learning from your mistakes. When you're teaching someone else, you're not just learning from your mistakes, you're learning from their mistakes and how to fix You're constantly trying to fix their mistakes. So you have way more practice than you would on your own. That's for sure. Um... Hobby artist said, reminds me of how it would be doing art with our neighbor's nine-year-old daughter a few weeks back. I got so frustrated with how she told the pencil points. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how much you're like with the younger ones around that age. Like, stop doing this. And you would think, nine, you can understand. Like, you're, no, there's something. And, and it's, you just have to kind of let the younger ones like that, I found, do their thing. Like, guide them. If they won't ask for help, give them help. Otherwise, just let them play with paint. And in my case, it wasn't as, as harsh because they had to bring their own supplies. So if you're ruining your own pencils, go for it. Um, they never were using my supplies or supplies that other students were sharing. So that may, may have made it less frustrating. Hobby artist said, try this trick. Nick posted up chat. Settings, phone, silence, unknown calls on. Yeah, but Nick is, is it Nick an iPhone user? Hold on. Well, my phone is on silent all the time. So I don't think that's it. And I'm pretty sure, am I getting that wrong? Let's see phone i don't like apple so settings phone silence settings phone well they're not unknown that's the thing they're actually coming up as numbers they're not coming up as unknown um also i want i may need a call from somebody who isn't in my phone thing so that doesn't work great um hold on one second you guys are, this is super unprofessional, but I have been waiting for about five months for a certain item that I need for my reef tank to come in stock and they sell out almost instantly. Let me see if I can get one really quick before it sells out. Yeah, this is professional right now. This is this is how you do business, but you don't understand. So it's reef rubble and it's um, gonna introduce good bacteria to my tank that I need. So let's see if they've got it or if it's already sold out. Subtotal, it already added it to my cart. Oh, cool. Um, proceed to check out. Oh, if it, I'm gonna be excited if this goes through. I have been waiting to get good beneficial bacteria like my tank desperately needs it. So if you're like, what is going on right now? I have a reef tank. It's been set up since, since April, but I'm not, 
plug in. I've not been um, able to get, there's only one place that I want to get the Reef Rubble, but he's been having problems with it, having uronema and different disease diseases, and his are guaranteed to be disease free. If I don't put things that aren't wet into my tank, like you get diseases, you get all kinds of stuff. His, he does DNA tests to make sure that they're not. So good luck getting them. And he gets them in stock. They are sold out in almost instantly. That's why I just got this email. I'm like, I'm gonna see if I can grab it really quick. The reef tank needs it. If this is not letting me sign in right now though, why are you not signing in? Come on, today would be nice. Here it goes, it's loading. Keep your fingers crossed that I get this. Did they get it? Did it go through? No, where's my cart? Does it show, their site is not Account, cart, like how in the world is this even being this difficult right now? It doesn't show a cart at all. My orders, does that show me anything? It's the guy who runs it is a scientist and he's amazing, but he's not a web designer. Um, that isn't showing me. Do I just go back and refresh? Hold on. It's not giving me my cart. Your website is really bad. Come on, load, load. Wait for, I did not think it would take this long and now it's just like, oh, now it shows that there's three in my cart. No, one. What in the world? Update cart. I don't need three, I need one. Come on. Actually, I think you're supposed to use more per size, but given the cost of this stuff, we're going with one. Proceed to checkout. Do you think I'm logged in right now? Yeah, you think I'm logged in. So we should be good, I hope. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Gail said, perfect timing for a call. I'm fixing a huge smudge. Nice. I mean, not nice that you have a huge smudge, but nice that I'm not wasting your time. Oh my gosh, seriously. Here we go. Billing. That is all correct. That is all correct. That is correct. That is correct. Hey, with PayPal, come on, load. Load quickly. I do this sometimes. I haven't done it in a while, but I used to order plants a lot from Steve's Leaves and he'd get more rare stuff and you're ho hoping to get through the checkout before somebody else does because those plants would be sold almost instantly because his prices were really good. So I'm kind of doing the same thing right now because I suspect there is going to be Proceed to PayPal. A lot of people trying to do it too. And the, what would happen with Steve's Leaves, their website did improve it. For a while, it was super, super slow. So depending on whose connection got through faster, like it was bizarre. You'd get through PayPal and it'd go, oh, sorry, item sold out. And you're like, dang it, I was so close. It's worse than like bidding on eBay. Okay, pay now. Fingers crossed. Yay! Looks like I got it. Okay, I'm, s oh, I kind of got goosebumps. It's just, so reef tanks need to have, let's back to work, Lisa. Reef tanks need to have beneficial bacteria. And when I did the DNA test on mine, it showed no bacteria, like none. And he goes, I don't know where, like, obviously your tank is processing nitrates. I don't know where they're going. Right now they're going to green hair algae. But this will help get good bacteria into the tank. So one of the things that had happened in my case, my fish had gotten sick and the amount let's see what do i want to use actually i'll keep using the violet works for the shell too the um the medicate or the the not medication but the chemical basically that i had to use the medic yeah i guess it is medication um that i had to use to treat for that and it also killed a lot of good bacteria in my tank i ended up going through some weird cycling things so trying to get that back on track has been a bit of a headache so the fact that that is now available, I have been waiting and he's been having a hard time because he does do a DNA test on all of his, like super reputable. Um, every one of his was coming back, not all of them, most of them were coming back positive for uronema. And once you get that in your tank, it lives there. Like you just, that is, if you ever wanted a green chromis or something like that, you've got something that will probably kill them. So luckily most of the fish I have, there are very few fish I don't think there's any fish I want eh, an Anthias, maybe. Most of the fish I want would not be prone to that, but still he wouldn't make it available. Like unless it's clean, he won't sell it. So that's, that is good. Okay, let's get back to chatting. Um, 
Where are we? Okay, Alexandra said, thank you for your tutorials on Patreon, especially for the ones in oils. I want to ask you, which website can we get art submissions besides Facebook and forums? What do you mean for art submissions? I'm not sure, let me know, Alexandra, I'm not sure what, what do you mean by art submissions? I'm not sure what that question is. Um, unless you mean for critiques? I don't know, let me know and I'll answer whatever. But I have I, more information is needed for this question. Uh, Jim Sierra said, after the first of the year, us mods might be trying to put together a mod squad video hop, each do a video on a set theme. LL, Angela and I just have to convince Nick and Joseph. That would be awesome. I like it. Um, Snow, I want to do it. Uh, Snow said, I have great respect for people who can, can word things like that. I don't have that skill. I can hardly explain what I'm doing to people who know the technical terms. I think part two is just reading people. Like I generally, I normally, nor I can read people except I got weirded out when I found I couldn't read people who were, um, uh, not schizophrenic. Um, why did my brain shut down? Not sociopath. Um, yeah, sociopaths. They, well, I can't, they don't have the same tells. That super weirds me out because I'm typically really good at reading people. I didn't even know I wouldn't like, yeah, that was odd. But anyway, um, the, the ability to read somebody. So when you can tell their face, they're like that really understand when they're not understanding, when they're not comfortable saying they're not understanding. I think that really, really helped me a lot having that ability. Uh, let's see. Eo said, you're a very good teacher. I picked up a paintbrush after 17 years because of you. Oh my gosh, goosebumps again. Oh, those goosebumps went down to my knees. Thank you. Oh, that makes me so happy. Clark Finer said, if you have that setting turned on, it will not let a number come through that isn't in your contacts. See, I don't want that either because there is a possibility somebody calls me who isn't in my contacts. So that isn't necessarily going to work. Um, hobby artist said, by the time she was 11 to 12, I saw her next time she lost interest in art. Yeah, that's not uncommon. Natalie said on Android, there's an app called Mr. Number that recognizes and blocks spam calls. I need to look into that. Actually, hold on. I'm writing that down. Mr. Number. Um... Phyllis said, don't worry about it. We'll still be there. The animals come first. We can wait. Thank you. Uh, Gail said, perfect time. Okay, got that one. Whoops. I just scrolled too far. Uh, whoop. And it scrolled too far again. Like I was almost there and it jumped. Kelsey said, yay, ink tons. I'm so excited for this because my me this medium is so hard for me for some reason. I'll give you some. We we've got some tips. Like what I'm doing right now, this looks black. It's not. It's, um, I'll see if I can adjust the color now that I've got some on there. It's a d deep violet that I'm working on. Oh, I missed a whole section of his tail. Um, Nightly Bug said, I had an unfortunate news that my surgery next year is postponed due to the zombie virus. I'm trying to look at a positive. That way I get more time in home for making art. Oh, I'm sorry. Ugh. Allie said, for texture and acrylic, what would you recommend? Glass bead gel, lava gel. I don't do texture and acrylic. So the, I'm not going to be your go-to for something like that because it's not something... I, I'm certainly no expert there. It's not something that I typically try. I'm, I'm typically trying to have no texture in my, my paintings. Um, not that there's anything wrong with having texture. It's a cool feature too, but my preference for my work, I don't want texture. So I definitely could not give you any advice there, unfortunately. I could make something up, but that's not going to be helpful either. Um, Brian said, I still think you should have a cactus behind the candle. Love you. <laughs> ah. I don't know. I mean, we'll, uh, I mean, I'm not at a point where I'd have to make that decision not to, but I, I think it's going to stay like this because the balance, I, I like this balance. So I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Snow said, I can't read people at all. Even when I try, my boyfriend's a so hopeless. I, I actually attribute a lot of that to growing up. My biological dad was schizophrenic and one of his things along with that and i'm not saying all schizo all people who suffer from sch schizophrenia i can't talk schizophrenia were how he was but he was very manipulative very like the lies the constant lies the um and sometimes his his what i thought of as lies back then were was because of mental illness and i get that now as an adult but at the time i didn't but even when it wasn't like it 
even when it wasn't where I would attribute it to the schizophrenia, he, he was just a liar. That was like just him. And I'm missing a whole section of the shell back here. Um, and you really had to learn to read that. And I had another family member, same thing. She just could not tell the truth. I mean, she'd be wearing like my bracelet. She, she'd go, she'd break into my room, my bedroom. And we didn't have a lot, like, and especially once at this point I was working, minimum wage back then was like three seventy five, three something an hour. I made very little money. And um, she would steal like bracelets that my friends had, my friend had given me. It was like a hemp bracelet and it had some beads on it. And I go in her room one night and she's wearing it. I'm like, is that mine? She pulls it under the blankets really fast. No. And then comes up with this whole story on where she got it from. I go in my room, mine's gone. Like, give it, just give it to me now. She, I had to put this heavy duty lock on my door because she kept breaking in and stealing my stuff. And so, like my CDs, because that was a thing back then. She kept stealing my CDs and selling them. Um, yeah, it was, It you learned to read lies, but I think it also gave me the ability to better read just in general. Um, cause you, you had to, the only way you were going to find out the truth was to read behind, like go further than what was being said. So I think that that helped me and as weird as that sounds, I think that that's why. Um, let's see. Hobby artist said, how do you transfer your sketch to watercolor paper? So in this case, I had everything drawn out in, or actually this was just a Photoshop mock-up. I just taped it to my computer monitor and traced it to save time. I had to get this done. Like I had about 10 minutes before the live stream started. I was like, crap, I need to do this really quick. I didn't have time to freehand it out. So in this case, that is what I did. Dart frog agrees. I saw them actually. So I have Santa Isabel dart frogs. Tiny, tiny little frogs. They're so adorable and so little. And which one are you? Okay, that is going to curve there or something like that. It doesn't have to be exact. I never see them though. They're very like, there's so many plants in there, which they love, but I hardly see them and they hide a lot if you walk over, um, unless you're moving really slow. The one, the dart frogs I see all the time are my leucamelas, the bumblebee dart frogs. They're, they're big compared to the Santa Isabels. And when I got the bumblebees, they were the same size. And just from never, almost never seeing the, the Santa Isabels, I saw one last, yesterday, one was out and it was like, they are the tiniest dinky little, like they, I have crickets that I feed my other frogs that are bigger than these guys. They're so cute and so little. I forgot how tiny they were because I never see them. I only hear them. Um, and I see the results of their trying to breed. Um, Daily Banks all over the place. Uh, you guys care. Let's see. Thank you. I worked in a ski school when I was younger. My job was basically to help the kids who didn't learn quick enough to continue their week courses with the others. Oh, I remember this kid who fell over all the time and had so much fun. Not everyone was out there to actually learn. I had to figure out a way for them to still get something out of the lessons. So that was definitely something I had to learn too. Like I, and I've talked about this kid before. I actually had some, some, I almost said the not, I said the B word almost, but this woman, his mom was a horrible human. This kid, so he was, and some of you guys have heard the story, but he was autistic and he was the happiest little guy. Like I loved him and he would come to class and he'd be painting a fish and the fish would be yellow and he's painting it green and purple and all these other colors. And he was having a blast. He was, I think he was like 12. So yeah, another kid that wasn't autistic probably would be doing more realistic stuff by then. This kid had a different vision though. He saw that fish and he saw things in it that I did not. And it was cool and he was having so much fun. And his mother would sit there, oh God, she, she was just in general a nasty woman, but she would sit there criticizing him and putting him down. She was taking the class too. And she was continuously putting him down and trying to tear him down. I'm like, let the kid have fun. If this is what he enjoys in art, what? and that's the thing with art, just because let's say he grows up as an adult and still wants to be an artist and his work is still, you know, let's say it comes out looking more like cubism. Great. If that's what he likes and that's what he's enjoying, let him enjoy it. Let him have fun. One of the worst things you can do for somebody teaching is criticize them constantly. Constantly tell them that you're doing this wrong. You need to change this. You need to change that. You need to combine that they have to not only have fun, while they're like, it's not just learning. If you're trying to get a student, and maybe it was different for me, because in my case, if students stop having fun, they stop coming to class. They stop coming to class, I stop being able to pay my bills. So you wanted to combine teaching 
with keeping them having fun enough that they want to keep coming back. That in that's in the in turn what's going to improve anyway. If they stop coming, they're not going to keep improving it regardless. So with oh that woman had made me mad though. That in just in general how she treated that boy. I actually had somebody in one of my comments when I had told that story go off on me. How dare you? You have no idea what it's like. Why are you assuming I don't know what it's like to have a family member who's autistic? I don't I don't understand why you're making that assumption. And that's why I'm, maybe that's why I am more critical of how poorly you treated this child. This child was having fun painting and all you wanted to do is tell him why it was wrong. It's art. Now, yeah, I mean, if you were doing math, absolutely, he's got to learn to do it correctly. It was art. There is no correctly in art. I mean, that not, oh, that still drove me crazy. But yeah, that woman who went off on me, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You, so what you're telling me is you too are a horrible pe person making excuses for why it's okay for you to treat a child poorly when they're having fun with art. Like, I don't mean having fun like he's causing problems. It was art. Like, does it matter if he wanted his fish to be a different color? Really? But she seemed to think that I was going to turn him into the next Van Gogh or something like. Not how art works. And any, and that's what, oh God. So this, talking about teacher and teachers, hold on, tea, or not tea, coffee. Um, I had a student. She started coming to me when she was like. I want to say she was around 11-ish, 12. I don't know. I worked with her for several years. Um, she was awesome. It was actually her, her older sister started with the classes and then she continued. And this girl clearly loved doing it. She was improving so much. Like in the amount of time I, I worked with her and she was one that really made me convinced like I saw in her more than anyone and then I started having other people do the same thing and it was always true. Where if, why tracing, if you trace a photo again and again, how it improves your drawing skills. Cause she started with me with very poor drawing skills. So maybe she was a little bit older because her, I would say she was below average in her drawing skills, but from practicing tracing, she got to where she could freehand very well, which was surprising how quickly she improved with that method. And then I, you know, work with other students with the same method and, and confirm that this is, a great way to teach someone to draw better. Anyway, so she had a high school art teacher who should not have been teaching art. She just discouraged her like crazy. And so she'd come to class just frustrated, like I'm going to give up. And she told me what her teacher told me or told her. And I remember one day she came in, she was doing a pet portrait of her dog. She had an old English bulldog. And yeah, there were a few issues with perspective we had to fix. No big deal. But some of it was correct. And the teacher goes in, this is all wrong. Starts erasing the paw and redraws it incorrectly. Like bad. It was bad. You're just looking at this going, I mean, kind of the equivalent when someone draws like, I don't know how to draw feet, so I'm going to draw a triangle. It was kind of like that level of bad. And I'm like, wait, your art teacher drew this and she's telling you, you can't draw. But she kept beating this girl down. And it was so frustrating. Um, I worked with her past when I left California. So I was with her for a long time. I used to do private lessons with her and her, kid, her sisters and brother too. But she, um, I found out from her mom, I went back to California when I was visiting years later. And she said, yeah, she gave up on art altogether. The teachers were just too negative. Her, this art teacher should not have been teaching art. She beat her down and told her how she was terrible. And it's so frustrating because somebody may start out absolutely terrible. Most of us do. That's no indication of whether or not you're going to be good or bad. So by telling this kid constantly how bad she was, she was never going to be good, she gave up. And I think she could have really been an amazing artist if she had the right kind of encouragement, but because she was told again and again by this horrible person. And I'm like, how do people keep these jobs? And this was a high school art teacher. So well, there you go. Actually, I can't, I, I tell crap about high school art teachers, but I've had, I've met a few who were amazing artists too. So there are the one-offs, but hers was not one of them. It's just so frustrating because she really could have been amazing if she had the right encouragement. But because when I left and she was left with this woman alone, because they never found another art teacher to replace me, or her mom didn't. And they, I don't know, maybe there's more art classes now, but they just didn't find the right teacher for her, and she gave up. And it, it, that really sucks, because she could have been amazing. And she enjoyed it when she was with me. That's what's so frustrating, to see a teacher be so negative that somebody, I don't care if somebody's producing something good or bad. If they enjoy it, go for it. So that's very, very frustrating to me when somebody is just discouraging, like, it, uh, yeah. I'm still angry about it, if you can't tell. 
Um, okay, let's see. Natalie Bug said, I used to think I hated acrylics, but it turned out it was just due to the canvas and technique. Now I use smooth panels and transparent paint, and I'm loving acrylics. Yay! Gypsy Heart said, you just lost an entire generation with one word. CDs, right? <laughs> Rotary phone, I could really screw with them. Um, I had, <laughs> how many of you were old enough that we all, I think we all had the same phone that was clear. It would have been in the 80s, I believe. It was clear and you could see all the components were all brightly co colored inside and lights and stuff. I got that for Christmas one year. Um, maybe it was the 90s, I don't remember. Shading of the Heart said, that sounds like my sister's husband, pathological liar. Very frustrating, but it teaches you how to, to read people better, I guess, when you're around it too often. Um, uh, Clark Feinhardt said, this give, oh crap, hold on, let me change that. This, there's no giveaway today that I missed that. That is a screw up, no, not that. There is no giveaway today. There will be one on Wednesday though. So if you're watching this going, what in the world? Not today. We'll just do that. Sorry about that. Um, starter husband. Oh, I missed that, Rod. I thought you said sister husband. You said starter husband. <laughs> That's funny. Sarah said, on the topic of lying, I heard uh, polygraphs are almost worthless. Guilty people have passed them because they're so calm and innocent people have failed them because they're nervous. Yeah, like I, my dad would have passed most of that, if not all, because he believed his lies half the time. Well, part of it, it was the schizophrenia. So that I think runs into something very different. But like when you get into sociopaths, they, they don't care that they're lying. The, the attitude, I looked into this a lot after the one person I had met who turned out to be a, a sociopath because it weirded me out so much. Um, we found out from the, his family or his mom had told us and it was like, whoa. So that actually makes a lot of sense now looking back. But anyway, when, um, when we found that out, I started like watching a lot of documentaries, watching a lot of things, like just learning about it. Cause it kind of, fa it both horrified me and fascinated me that there would be people I so couldn't read like at all. So anyway, um, that was one of the things that they were saying with them. It was like, when they lied, you were expected to believe the lie. And if you didn't believe their lie, that meant you were wrong. Like you were wrong for not believing it because if they said it, it's true. Like it, it was a very bizarre, like that was one of them. There's more factors than that, obviously, but it was a very, I mean, look, watch some stuff on YouTube has a lot of documentaries and stuff that are, it's interesting and terrifying. Hi, artistic flower. Um, oh, that just jumped. Where were we? Ali said, have you tried Windsor and Newton professional acrylics? They have unique colors such as Perlene Violet PV29, which in mass tone is a red black color, perfect for deeper red shadows. No, I've not. My so the one of the things that I like so much about um, the Liquitex Basics, I love that they're translucent, but I also love that they dry flat or pretty flat. So most other acrylics that I've I've used do not dry flat and that means they don't work they're not the most ideal for my techniques so um that like the the charcoal pencil doesn't show up really well and it makes them really hard to photograph now the one that i am interested maybe maybe after christmas maybe i'll do that as a goal like when patreon hits a certain point i can spend that money and get some new a uh, whole new set of paints but i really am interested in goldens has a matte acrylic paint now i'm definitely interested in reviewing those Actually, maybe I can contact them. Maybe I can get them to send me some. Um, Hobby artist said, I think that's what killed my art creativity for years in high school. My art was consistently, my art was consistently correcting me. Granted, my drawings weren't accurate, but I felt put down. Yeah, and it's a weird thing with art. Like, you, this is one of the reasons when I do critiques where I ask, like, what are your goals? Because what my goals are and what your goals are are not necessarily going to be the same thing. So, and that's important. Because it's not that my goals mean you have to do, have the same goal. You have to do the same thing as me. And that's, I think, very hard when it... Now, to be fair, when you're teaching, you assume if someone's taking your class, it's because they want to learn your methods. But yeah, um, I definitely don't like... Especially, in, I see that at high school, junior high, where they're just being told there's only one way. Like, teach them your way, but also teach them there are other ways to get to a, the same end or to achieve different things. 
I think that there's a way to teach them and have them improve without beating them down. So let's see, we've got some lines. We'll just do a little shading. And most of this will get covered, so it's not gonna stay as violet. And this, let me see if I can fix this, because this looks nearly black and it is definitely not. Um, is it the saturation? Yeah, that definitely makes some of a difference. That's much closer. It's not exact, but actually, <coughs> that's pretty close. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, Ia said, the mom should not have ha hired that horrible art teacher for her daughter. Well, she didn't. That's the thing. She was taking high school art classes. So it wasn't that she was like paying for it. It was like, oh, you're, you're taking art. Like this is what's available right now. So yeah, that was um, not a hired teacher. That's for sure. I mean, I guess technically we paid for it with our taxes. Whoa, that got really, hold on. That completely changed to weird. Why did you change? Um, am I just going to have a problem with my white balance wanting to adjust itself? See, that looks white. Let's see if it stays that way. It may be one of those cases where until I start getting cut, like a lot of color on there, it just keeps adjusting itself. Hobby artist said, I don't remember those phones, but I remember when you could only get music on records and cassettes. Do you remember um, eight tracks? That was just kind of before, like I was a kid when those were still being used. I do remember my parents' car having that. Um, with like Fleetwood Mac, who's still awesome, but whatever. Um, uh, let's see. Shelly said, I think you're an amazing teacher. I always hear your tips in my head as I work. Oh, yay. Sometimes I laugh out loud and my hubby wonders what I just said. <laughs> I just said, Lisa said something. JPC 13R. By the way, so JPC 13R, I logged in. I used Instagram a little bit because I wanted to share the um, Canby app with people and I'll be sharing some stuff on there. Anyway, point is, I went on to Instagram. I'm not normally there. JPC 13R, who apparently, well, are you not on MeWe? Why are you not on MeWe? Because I want to see your stuff. Holy crap. You want to talk about somebody who has improved over the years? Man, that guy is good. Um, anyway, let's read his question now. I just want to throw that out there. I saw your stuff on, on Instagram recently because I had, had to log on for that. I was like, Whoa, you are, I mean, you were good, but you just keep improving. Holy crap. Um, also, join me on MeWe so I can see your stuff more often. Uh, I was browsing Blick last night and came across something from Derwent called Lightfast Paper. It looks like it was made to go with pencils. It was expensive, like $60 for a 9 by 12 pad. Dang, that is expensive. Oh, that may be out of my budget. Um, Snow said, this is, uh, there, there's a channel about criminal psychology on YouTube and even trying to read body language, pathological liars and sociopaths truly believe their lies. So you can't tell. Yep. It's weird. It is, it is the most bizarre thing to me because I didn't know anything about that until like maybe three years ago. And it's, yeah, it, it was a shocking thing this late in life to find out. Um, I mean, I knew they existed. I just didn't know you really wouldn't be able to tell when they were lying to you and to have dealt with someone one-on-one -on -one in person. And I always can tell when people are lying and it's like, I didn't, it, it's weird to me that I didn't know. And then looking back, I'm like, yeah, those, that didn't make sense. Like the words he said did not make sense, but he was so convincing in the way he said it, it made sense. Like you just took it as truth. Uh, Gypsy Heart said, be warned, the golden so flat has a very strong odor. Ooh, that's unpleasant. What's it smell like? Uh, Natalie Bug said, I recently tried the professional artist Windsor & Newton acrylics and they're very translucent, dry and flat matte. Huh. Now that's interesting. That sounds like I might, like Windsor & Newton and usually Windsor & Newton is in my price range. So I like, I'm going to have to look into that. Natalie Bug said, I wanted to try this So Flat Paints by Golden, but I hear they have a strong smell. Oh, you said so too. So I'm super sensitive. So I'd be interested in your opinion. Maybe I'll just get a black and a white, both of that and of the Windsor and Newton one and try them, do a project with each. And that way I'm not investing a whole lot of money because uh, you can do a whole painting with black and white. And yeah, I'll do, I'll plan on that. Actually, let me write that down because I'm going to need to, I need to buy some acrylic paints anyway. So we'll have some more upcoming videos. We had Sarah's idea and then, um, Okay. Also, don't let me forget. I want to show you guys what I started last night. I'm so excited for this week's Patreon video. It's, it's 
remind me because I'm using one of the pencils from that. I'm working in water soluble graphite. I am keeping this for myself. I am framing it. It's going on my wall in my bed, like in my bedroom. It, it's that shell that I found that I wanted to draw so bad I got excited about that oh, I think I got it on Unsplash. Oh, I can't wait for this lesson. It, I'm enjoying painting. Like it is so, it's a good one. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in the smell of those. So I'll have to order a black and white, like definitely when I place my next order. Um, oh, it's Clark Reinhardt's birthday today. Happy birthday. I didn't see that. JBC13 said, OMG, thank you so much. My improvement over the years is all thanks to your videos. Aw, I've been watching them since the beginning of my art journey. That's awesome. Join me week because I want to keep seeing. Like, I, I don't like using Instagram and Facebook because it's all Facebook. And I don't, I think it's bad for, like, it's not good for our business. Um, I want to see a platform like me, we grow because it's, like, there's no algorithm. You post something that's good and people, if they choose to see you, they get to see all your stuff. So I really am hoping, like, so I try not to participate too much. And normally if I post on either platform, it's just to tell people where you can find me on another platform. So, yeah. Uh, Javier just said, don't remember eight tracks. It's eight, eight tracks, not eight tracks, right? Eight Eight, like the number. Now I don't know because I was little at the time. Um, Art-wise, in six months, I've been watching... You've made up for the times my my high school correctly uh, corrected and put down my art. Oh, I'm sorry that happened to you, but I'm glad to hear that, that I'm helping. Eo said, sorry, I cannot recall, but have you tried watercolor pencils? I have and I love them. I have Caranache, I have Faber-Castell, and I have Derwent. And oddly enough, I expected to not like Derwent as much because I figured, oh, they're less expensive. They're not like the super light fast, so there's that. But I figured they just wouldn't perform as well either. No, they're really good. Like, I actually really liked them. So yeah, no, I really do like watercolor pencils. Although now that I've been using pan watercolors, I'm leaning more towards enjoying those. But they're both really fun to work. I work in so many different mediums. It's like, I want to work in all of them, but there's only so much time. But yeah, watercolor pencils. Watercolor pencils, well, first, I would say, like, what led me to be more comfortable with working in, in watercolor in general. So I'd been using ink tents for a bit. I loved it. Then when I tried, I'm like, okay, we'll try the watercolor pencils because Derwent sent me some. And I was like, whoa, these aren't hard to use. Like, using some of the techniques I'd learned, I had to adjust some, but learning some of the techniques I had learned from ink tents, which... I feel are just, I don't know, I think in many ways ink tents are easier. Not every way, but in a lot of ways. So I um, did the, the, the watercolor pencils for a while, and that's really what led to me being comfortable enough to go ahead and try watercolor pans, and it turns out I love them. A lot of this you will not see too much. This is just going to be underneath color when I add it later. Actually, that, hold on, let me see if I can get this before it dries. That's not the right brush. Hurry, that one will work. Can I soften this a little? Uh, you're already dry. See, this is the thing with ink tents. If it starts to dry, oh, there we go. I blended it out. I'm like, that was way too harsh. Just spread that. That I can work with, but that was really harsh for a second there. I pushed a little too hard with that brush. Okay. Just kind of watching the way that the, the shapes change and move, getting those lines sketched in. It doesn't need to be perfect, just something semi-close. That's what I really was finding when I worked. It's the same type of shell, pretty much. I think it's the exact same type of shell that I'm working with. Um, the, wait, this shell, that one went there. Oh, there's some more that come out here. Um, the water-soluble graphite. And you don't need to be exact. You just need to be close to get that feel. Um, let's see. Oops, that just jumped. And JPC13 said, okay, you've convinced me. I downloaded Miwi. Yay, I'm me as a friend. Um, I'm demanding, aren't I? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, everyone's saying it is an eight track. Okay, I did have that right. Um, oh, yesterday was your birthday. Well, happy birthday. I missed it. 
Gypsy Heart said, I was working all day. God, yesterday was a long day. Uh, Gypsy Heart Craft said, they smell like rancid vinyl to me. Had to pass. Some colors are stronger than others, too. They're super opaque because the mattifying agents they use in it. Ooh. Yeah, it doesn't sound like that's going to be the, the choice for me then, huh? Uh, Cheryl said, are you referring to the So Flat or the Matte Golden Paint? Oh, I don't know. What's the difference? I haven't tried either of them, so I don't know. Clark Fine Art said, yes, 8-track. They had 8-tracks. Remember when we had cassette converter that plugged into it so my parents could play the new fancy cassettes in the old equipment? I had in my old truck, mine had came, my truck came with a cassette player, and I had to plug in a little separate um, D, or CD player. It was like this huge thing that sat on the truck seat next to me, and if you hit a bump or anything, the CD would constantly skip. So your CDs were scratched all the hell, like if you were driving around with them. And it was so bad. Like, it was so bad. Oh, I love um, the MP3s or whatever we listen to now. Uh, let's see. Gypsy Art said, I say rancid viral is literally the only thing I could think of. What it would smell like it could go if it could go rancid. Yeah, that's, hmm. That's terrifying. Snow said, watching you, I tried going back to watercolor pencils, just ended up not really being thrilled about them and purchasing normal watercolors, <laughs> loving it so far. Yeah, you know, I don't think I've used watercolor pencils since I got my pan watercolors. I mean, I feel like watercolor pencils are a little bit easier to control. Um, so they're a really good in-between. But yeah, I really prefer the pan watercolors, I think. But then again, would I prefer the pan watercolors if I hadn't gotten used to working in watercolor pencils first? So it's, I don't know. Because I really did not like um, uh, watercolor. Like, I mean, you guys may remember how many times I complained about it. Like, I was terrible. I love the look of it. I was just terrible at it. But that was kind of a nice, like, I feel like the watercolor pencils were a bit more training wheel-like for me. Not that they don't produce uh, some of my favorite, one of my absolute favorite pa paintings was done with Karen Dosh watercolor paper. Or watercolor pencils. Um, oh, okay. it's a clownfish and anemone. And then actually one of my other favorites was the lionfish I did with the ink tents. Actually, or not ink tents, um, Derwent watercolor. I've not done a project I super loved with the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. And that's not anything against the pencils. It's I've not chosen anything good. <laughs> like I need to come up with something better. Um, oh. My airbrush just hit the floor. So yeah, I'm, maybe I'll have to have to do them again so that I can have something good with them too because the Faber-Castell pencils are amazing as well. They seem to be a little bit more translucent. I found the, the Faber-Castell and the um, Derwent seem to be more traditional. Like they feel like what an actual watercolor pencil or watercolor would be more translucent. Whereas the Caran d'Ache, which is funny because Caran d'Ache is big, like their selling thing is it's more like traditional watercolor. No, it's more like traditional gouache. Like their colors are, they have some that are fairly translucent, but mostly I would say it's more like gouache, which I liked. So yeah, I need to get gouache too. I work in too many mediums. Um, Shelly said, I added watercolors to my arsenal of mediums a year ago. I love them far more than I thought I would. Yeah, and I think too, I don't know about you, if this was the case for you, but for me, when I had used, um, um, I'll have to check up on that. Um, when I had used the um, watercolor before, it was like Crayola or Prang or something like that. And the, the color was just, there wasn't good saturation. And I think a lot of what I didn't like about them wasn't even so much that I couldn't control them. It was like, there was no color saturation. It was so dull. So I think that that was part of it too. And when I started using, like invested in actual, and watercolor was an expensive medium to get started with. But when I started using them, the, the big difference in using quality watercolor, like they are way more dependent on good good brushes, good paper, good everything than most mediums. Um, Javier said, heads up, in your $9 tier, it says that the monthly challenges, you get access to a private Facebook group. You do. Is it not working? You do. It's still there. I mean, I hardly use, I don't check it. You guys are welcome to use it. Um, I don't even get that's the thing with facebook i never even get notifications when people were applying to the group i'll randomly get one and i have to go in and it's like oh 10 people were supposed to be added to this so yeah it's annoying i i am behind on the monthly challenges i need to do one for this month um still i don't think i did one for last month no one does them so i forget about them because nobody does them so i'm like is that, that maybe maybe that's a reward i should remove let me know guys 
no one's do i have not seen anyone do one of those in forever so i don't know if it's something that people enjoy enough for me to continue doing if that's something i should just remove from that tier because i've added other rewards so you're still getting more than you ever got but that one thing no one seems to do and so then i forget about them and then i don't upload a new one um Clark Finer said the CD player with the cord to the cassette player in the car. Dirt roads were not your friend back then. Well, I was in California. We didn't even have dirt. Like everything was paved, but it didn't matter because it was still bumpy. I can't even imagine with a dirt road. Shelly said, I hated it when those eight tracks changed tracks. The best part of a song. <laughs> Gypsy Heart said the golden um, is flat, so they're only matte acrylic. They don't offer two different ones. Oh, okay. George said, I kept my CDs, but only have my computer drive to play them on occasion. I don't have a ton of them. I, the only, I have a few CDs. I don't, you, you know what? I don't have a, a drive to play them either now that I think about it. I would have to get a separate, I think I did order a separate player because I have some classical CDs that I wanted to transfer over. Um, and they're sitting in the garage in a box, taking up space. It's a big box too. So I need to, one of these days, maybe I'll go through that trouble. Um... Let's see. Snow said, I really don't like watercolor as well from memory, but it turns out it's because I never used quality ones, just the school chalky ones. Yeah, that was the same for me. Um, where are we? That just jumped. Whoa, it really jumped. Holy crap, it jumped. Here we go. Art Artisan said, Senlier, I'm butchering that name, said, have matte acrylics in their abstract range. They are packaged in pouches with a nozzle, so easy to get all the paint out. Interesting. I don't think I've tried those. Shana said, your life seems so peaceful. Animals, fish, birds, no kids. Oh, all the art every day. Talk about goals. I will say with all of my animals lately, I've been, not from the animals, just life in general. I've definitely hit that point where I'm just so tired. I have fibromyalgia. I'm tired all the time anyway. But I'm like not taking time off. I'm trying, I've been working to improve Patreon even more and my website and everything else. And the website's done. So that should calm down now. But I've put so much time into stuff. I don't feel calm. I feel like go, go, go constantly like, okay, this project's done. Get this one going now. And I'm freaking exhausted. Like I just want to sit down and read a book or something. Like I don't have time for that sort of thing. I work constantly. I take naps in the middle of the day. Every day I do get a nap. So um, there's that at least. But if I didn't, I can't work at night. Like I won't get my work done. So that's how I can function. But it's, yeah, I am, I don't feel that peaceful. Like it took, I'm cleaning frog, you know, going through doing my frog rounds. That's like, it's only like 20 minutes a day to take care of all the frogs each day, but it's still just, it all adds up. Then I got to take care of the plants. And I'm like, I think I've got myself into too many, not too many hobbies because I love them. I think I've got to just organize everything better. But yeah, I, I don't feel it's that peaceful. I feel very busy, always. But at the same time, I complain about that. But I, I love my life. Like I wouldn't want to, I could work a nine to five job and come home and just be off. Well, I wouldn't make enough to pay my house payment if I did that um, for anything I'm qualified for. But yeah, no, I mean, it's worth it. I love it. But man, lately I have definitely hit that point where I am just so exhausted. I don't think the weather helps either with it being like right now it's all like kind of not dark but there's also no sun it's behind misty clouds it's not pretty out so it's actually warm though it's in the 70s today what is it 76 right now so it's really warm but that's not helping my energy levels that's for sure and yes i do take vitamin d but it's still i'm just oh all i want to do is sleep uh hobby already said opaqueness is what i don't like with the karen dosh watercolor pencils and it's so funny because like I can work with them and I got great results. Other than purples, there were certain colors I couldn't, no matter what I did, I could not make it dark enough. So, so there was definitely some complaints there that I didn't experience um, with Faber-Castell or um, Derwent. But besides that, I really liked the results I got. I just thought it was funny that like when you read their selling points, they try to make it sound like theirs are more watercolor like than other colored pens. Like, wait, what? No, yours are more gouache, not true watercolor. I mean, gouache is just opaque watercolor, but it was kind of funny. Like you're selling it on something that it's not. So it was, you know, a great balance. They could, they could market that, I think, in a way that was more honest, but also still made it sound good, which being more honest always is better. So yeah, I was kind of surprised at the way that that was worded when I tried it. It was like, wow, it's not at all what you explain or describe that as. <clears throat> 
Eo said, I have the Dermot watercolor pencils, but I think, I think they suck, but I'm pretty sure I'm not using them correctly. I have only used them the one time on that, um, I think just the one time, on the lionfish, and I loved them. Like, I was surprised at how much I loved them. I almost felt like they were even more pigmented than the Faber-Castell, but the Faber-Castell, and now keep in mind, I've used them once. I'm not like super experienced and I can really make a great comparison with the two. So I am limited there, but in the one time I used them and it may just be, have been the colors I chose, I felt like I had an easier time getting um, darker pigments from the Derwent than I did Faber-Castell. But then again, now that I think about it, the fabric has stolen, so I was mostly using blues, where Derwent I was mostly using blues and purples, so maybe the purples are, I don't know. Derwent's just known for having amazing purples, though, so there's that. Um, let's see, Gail said, you're my favorite artist to follow because you work in so many mediums. Aw, that makes me feel good. I get bored with just one and I love to switch around. I always feel like sometimes I don't get as many views or I don't, um, like I, I'm, too all over the place on what I do. So where somebody might subscribe, they're only really interested when I do oil paints and I don't do oil painting that often, although I do need to do one soon. I haven't done one in way too long. Uh, but I always wonder like, how much is that hurting me that my views? Because people, I'll get the subscriptions, but then they're like, well, I really only wanted to watch in this medium. And so I'm not gonna watch the other ones. But that's good to hear. This little mouse is so cute. Um, uh, let's see. Natalie said, I've always struggled with watercolor pencils, but I wasn't very experienced with pencil mediums before following you. Trying them at the moment with watercolor and a graphite turtle. Nice. Oh, well, the one that I did. Are you, the lesson of mine? That one is fun. And because it's so busy, I feel like it's easier to make look good. Like, it's not as stressful. Like, busy is less stressful. More time consuming, but less stressful, I think, in making it look good. Hobby artist said, with $9 Patreon tier, it just felt weird that you'd still have the group on Facebook. So you're so anti-Facebook. Well, it's Facebook and um, and MeWe. I can't just get rid of, of the Facebook one because too many people are not willing to try another platform. And then Facebook lied about MeWe and got a bunch of news reporters. It even says it on their Wikipedia. They tried to turn it into like, MeWe's a political... No, it's not. It has nothing to do with politics. But like, oh, it's for extremists went there. And I'm like, I see more, way more extremist stuff when I log into Facebook than I have ever seen on MeWe. Um, it's just free for everybody. There's no political affiliation. The owner's a libertarian. Like, it's not, it's not about politics. And so that... Um, anyway, the point is a lot of people didn't want to use MeWe because they, they believed Wikipedia. And whoever believes Wikipedia, seriously... You need to rethink who you're getting your new, your information from. The average person writes it. There was one. So this is, this is what Wikipedia does. Wikipedia, because people will write in, the average user, it's not like it's experts who are writing these articles. Somebody will come in and write something and someone disagrees and they change it. Someone, they go back and forth on this. But anyway, they claimed this one journalist invented a Zeppelin that um, during like Occupy Wall Street and he invented the Zeppelin to take video or something, something like that, which he did, never, never was a thing. He had tried for so long to get Wikipedia to change it and they wouldn't, they absolutely refused. And they said that he was not a, what did they say? Something like he wasn't a reliable source. And he's like, I am telling you, I did not invent this thing that you have on my Wikipedia page telling me I invented something that, or telling people I invented something I didn't. So he's currently now, inventing that zeppelin so they're having to go back it will now be it's kind of funny but anyway the point is wikipedia it's just in, individuals who put that information there's a reason schools don't let you cite them as a actual source it depends on who wrote the article and it's just average people so the information there is very very inaccurate and that's one of the things that they did so um uh, facebook which was g it was both evil genius but also you know i get it it was genius. They did not, not want people. A lot of people started leaving. They didn't like some of the stuff going on with Facebook and they left and were going, a lot of people started joining MeWe. So what they did is got news, news people to say that, and it was this whole smear campaign. You tell me people weren't paid off to do this, but they started saying that, oh, it's for these extremists and we keep you safe from extremists. I'm like, what are you talking about? All the extremists are on your platform. Like that's where I see most of this, the stuff that you're talking about is on yours. I don't know why you claim that it's not. Um, and I've seen very little on, on MeWe. 
Um, probably just because of who I follow. It's not that they couldn't post there. It's just, you know, who I follow. But yeah, it was really bizarre. But anyway, the point is a lot of people like on Patreon and such, they were not willing to try another platform. And I've talked to several people since and they're like, well, I, I read on Wikipedia, it said it, it was for this. And it's like, it's not for politics. It's not about politics. You could join political pages, I'm sure. That's not where I'm going to get my news from. So I'm not, I don't see it on me. I don't ever see it. So it's very weird the way that so many people believed it. They wouldn't even try it. They just believed the smear campaign. Again, evil genius on Facebook's part because it convinced people that this platform has dangerous information and we keep you safe. And that's what they did. It, it was a lie. It worked. Because so many people aren't willing to. And then you, of course, get where it's just hard to get a new platform going. Um, because if people won't join, then it's boring. So that's why we've got a really big, big art group over there. Um, so we, we will entertain you with the art group, even if you don't have a ton of friends yet. Uh, let's see. Shelly said, but the point is I still have to have the Facebook one because a lot of people are just not willing to try another platform. Shelly said, yes, poor color saturation with cheap watercolor was why I never used them. Added Schminka and what a game changer. Yep, that, they're so amazing. That just jumped up a lot. Um, oh my gosh, it really jumped. Hold on one second. Wow, that really jumped. Where are we? There we are. I hate when this does that. Karina said, I'm here for the last five minutes of your stream. Cheryl said, the So Flat has a bit more of an ammonia smell, but the matte doesn't. Oh, weird. Oh, I don't want ammonia. Like, the, ew. Karina said, love the layout of this new project. Thank you. And I like oil painting smell like certain supplies. I like the smell of. I don't think I'd like an ammonia smell, though. Oh. Snow said, wow, it's negative six Celsius, so like 21 F there. Oh my gosh, you are cold there. Yeah, I'll take my 76 right now. I'm loving it. I mean, oh, and the sun actually just came out. It still is ugly outside though. My trees are all bald. Um, Marika said, what do you think about Inktense watercolor mixed media? I'm not sure. No, actually I could see where that would be useful because if you had, let's say you wanted to line like what I'm doing here with Inktense and then do your background blend because you get that cool, watercolor just can get a really unique look the way you can lift some of the color and get, I like the blotchiness you can get. I know a lot of people avoid that look, but I think it looks cool. So no, that actually could work well together. Now, of course the downside is you, with Inktense, I don't sell anything with Inktense because a lot of the colors are not light fast. But if you don't care about that and you're just gonna make prints, um, that sort of thing, that could potentially work. I, I can see where using them together might be beneficial. I've never tried it, but uh, let's see. Yeah, um, if you've typed anything, I've not answered you. If you do the at lock refine art, it highlights my name in orange and then I'm able to see. Otherwise, I just miss it and I'm sorry. The matte is a fluid paint. Um, Alexandra said, on which website can we get art commissions besides Facebook and forums. Commissions, I actually think with Etsy and eBay has an option for that. I know they used to, I don't know, I haven't tried on either one, but that's an option. Um, I used to get them on Craigslist. Now you get a lot of flakes on Craig, Craigslist too, but if you, you do that right, that might be an option. Now, I when I say I used to, I mean like 10 years ago, it's been a long time since I I did any of that, but that that could potentially be an option. Um, like I would just let people know I did portraits and then there were people who were just looking for artists and I responded to them and they hired me to do some stuff. So I found some work that way. Um, I've not even opened Craigslist in forever, so I don't know how that is now. Um, obviously your own website, if you can get enough traffic to your website, and that's always its own challenge, but if you can get traffic to your website where you, and this comes down to having good SEO, good description. So when someone types in pet portrait artist, you want you want to come up on those search engines. So if you were, let's say you did a page and you showed just samples of your work, but you didn't really have good descriptions, it's not going to come up on search engines. So that may be a possibility um, if you get your website going and you get the good search terms in there. Um, where else? Locally, um, if you're, let's say you're doing pet portraits, sometimes animal hospitals will display your cards and your artwork. And that may be a way to get business. 
I, yeah, I got one. Um, I wasn't for long because that, that animal hospital didn't stay in business long, but there was one in Frisco that I went to that had my art displayed. And I did get one commission from that in the short time we were advertising there. Um, Natalie said, meanwhile, if you're using a medium I haven't tried yet, I'm like, hmm, another medium to try. <laughs> Bill said, I also like the different mediums. I get bored with bigger projects, so breaking them up with other mediums is great. I feel exactly like you. I am with you on that. Uh, Cheryl said, they still have both. The company is near my house, and I get all my supplies there as well, and I have contacts there. Nice. Chuck said, hi, Lisa. First time I chat. Welcome. I'm using the water-soluble graphite, but it blends with my other colors. How do I fix that? that that's what water-soluble graphite does. Like, water-soluble graphite is not permanent. Wait, oh, do you mean you drew everything out first with water-soluble graphite? Because then that's different. So, yeah, and that is going to blend in with other colors. That is the nature of it. And so you've got to decide. I'm actually glad you brought that up. So you've got to decide when you use water-soluble graphite, when do you want to use water-soluble graphite versus regular graphite? If you use regular, even regular graphite will smudge in with your other colors to an extent but like here i've got water soluble graphite i've got to be kind of careful when i blend the yellows because that will mix in with it so i drew it really light whereas over here you may have, i don't know if you could really tell but everything was drawn really really dark over here wow my hand is super orange but anyway um it's it's not like it's it's me colored it's just that camera anyway no one cares moving on lisa so um yeah, it's going to mix in because that's what water-soluble graphite does when you add color to it. But I used the light hand. There's not a ton there. I pushed heavier where things were going to be dark, so it didn't matter if it mixed in. But where it needs to be light, or let's say you just don't, you want the least amount possible of mixing in, then that's when I typically would go with a regular graphite pencil, but a really light one, like maybe a 4H or a 3H. Even a 2H would potentially be okay. But the problem there is, let's say I drew the flame with a regular graphite pencil. You're always going to see that line. It's never going to blend out. So this will darken the color a little bit. The other one would have had a harsh line. Those are your, well, and then your other option is not to do any. Here's another thing you could do. You could draw this out in ink tints. So let's say I knew that needed to be yellow. I could have gone and grabbed a yellow or whatever color I wanted, pencil and drawn it out with that as well. Or a watercolor pencil would also be an option. So you can use those so that the color is similar to whatever color you want. So you've just got to kind of figure out, okay, I'm I'm drawing this over an area that's going to be dark. It doesn't matter if, if the graphite mixes in with it. Here, it's going to be an area I want really light. I don't want it to blend in. However, I don't want the graphite line showing at all. Maybe the ink tense, a yellow ink tense pencil would be a better choice. So you've just got to figure out what area you're going to blend and just know that they will mix in so you you you've picked the le the lesser of your evils um karina said i think it opens up more options for people so with so many mediums i love seeing so many choices to choose from yay um Clark Brenner said, your willingness to show us work in so many mediums over the years has definitely contributed to the wide range of mediums I now have in my studio. No regrets. I love the supplies. Um, let's see if I can get caught up really quick on some of these questions because this is all over. Mildred said, there's also the wiki loop, wiki loop problem. A person will write an article based off unverified information on Wikipedia then someone else cites the false information they saw. Yes. Well, the news media does that too. So one will, like someone will, will present a story and it will be false. And then another outlet takes that story and just repeats what they just said. And they keep spreading this, like, no one did the research. They just made an assumption that, oh, they were right. So we'll cite them. And it's like, but they didn't do research. So it, yeah, we get that in, in media a lot or just news media. Karina said, wow, uh, we're at 110, 112 degrees this summer is painful and it'll be like this for the next three to four months. Oh my gosh. Um, almost got a, uh, artistic flower say, I like how the drawing looks. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Okay, back to lining things. Oh, Cheryl said, Lisa, I have contacts for you concerning Goldens if you want. I can send it to you, um, if I get your email, however you would like it, I can't put the info in live chat. Yeah, um, lisa at lawcree.com. It's kind of easy to remember. That would be awesome.
Yeah, Goldens has sent me something. They actually, I met them at an art thing um, that I had done with Derwent. They were there. It was like an art. It wasn't for like the average, like an artist to go to. It was for, it was an art manufacturer thing. So like art stores would go to it and see the different supplies and practice and all of that. And um, I talked to, it was like the son or grandson or somebody involved. He was really cool. I was actually really impressed with the information he gave me on Goldens, but he's the one who got me started with their airbrush paint. He sent me a few of them and I was like, holy crap, this is so much better than Cre uh, Createx for the way I work. So Createx is a good paint too. It's just for how I work, it's better to have something that's thinner. Createx is too thick for the size needle I use in my airbrush. So yeah, I was listening to him talk about the business. One of the things, so this is what gets me with art supplies. You have companies like Prismacolor. They are owned by another major, is it Rubbermaid? I always screw this up. So somebody fact check me on that because I'm definitely getting that wrong. But they are, they're not just an art supply company. They're a company who bought out an art supply company and they make those, but they don't care about artists. I like companies like Goldens or Faber-Castell or Derwent who actually care about artists and creating products that we want. I trust them more. So, um, that I definitely like listening when I talk to a company like Goldens and listening to them talk about that. It was, I was definitely impressed with them. Like they seem to really care about producing quality products that artists want to use. Uh, Brian said, what's the difference? Do you find between the water loaded brushes compared to the brushes you're using now? Does the work come out differently? So I'm actually, I have them right here. I like these for blending certain areas. Like let's say I put down paint and then I had to blend it out. Like I applied the pencil directly to the paper and then blended it out. I like it for that. Or that's primarily what I use besides the background for the graphite piece. Actually, I've talked about it enough. Let me grab this to show you what I'm working on right now with water soluble graphite. So I used a few different techniques on this than what I've done before. Let's see if it'll show up. Um, so it's actually, that is pretty accurate. This is done with water soluble graphite. So this is the tip, the work. It looks like off, but the, the artwork itself, that is pretty much what this looks like in person. Um, but this one is with the water soluble graphite. And for the most part where I, uh, just to show you what I mean, may as well do a little bit on that just to give you an idea. So if I take my pencil and I decide, okay, I want it really dark right here. We'll put a few extra lines and then I can take this and lightly go over that, blend that out from the pencil that I applied. So when I've applied pencil to the paper, then I really like using this. But, and it can be the same with the ink tents. Like if I take the ink tents pencil and then I blend it out, I really do like these water brushes. And the Derwent water brushes are my favorite. I have one by Faber-Castell, it's okay. But these ones hold, they, if I remember correctly, they hold more water and I just really like them. They have a lot of different sizes of the bristles. So this is one where that works. But my background here, I did not do that. To get that background that dark, I had to do that in multiple layers with the 8B pencil. And the way that I blended it, you'll see this on the Patreon video this week. I and I was blending it, where's the brush? This is the brush that I used. It was a filbert, just tack on bristle filbert that I used to blend out. And you could really see a brush stroke. So I did that the first few layers. And then I got to where I just started spraying. I used my fine mist sprayer, sprayed over it. Do I have it over here? I used this mop brush. It's actually a blush brush. I just missed this, got it wet, took this brush and went over it like, oops, it's got a little water on it. Went over it like this and it blended into this perfectly smooth, like this background was definitely a challenge for me to get. I had to try a few different methods because it really wanted to show those brush strokes when I blended. But in that case, this little brush is not going to blend that background. So in that case, having a natural paintbrush to blend it, even though I was blending the pencil, I applied to the pencil or the paper. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, so like here, anywhere where this is, I, it can be reactivated and smudged around just a little bit because the pencil is already there. But in this case, like what I'm doing right now, let's put this guy back. I'm gonna move it so I mess it up. Um, in this case i'm lifting paint and applying it to the paper now could you do that with the, the um the brush technically yes and i will show you why i don't though i have one over here 
Here is one where it came with a smart art box and they had you actually mix the paint, like lift it, or maybe it was ink, but you lifted it with the water with this. And when you do that, when it, like how I'm taking a brush, I'm lifting the ink, I'm applying it. If you do that with a water brush, it sucks up the color. So you can see it's filled with black. I have cleaned this out multiple times. I've never been able to get rid of it all the way. So I never, it's a good example of why I don't do it that way. So if I've already got the pencil on there, blending with these are amazing. But in this case, if I'm applying paint with the brush, then I'm gonna go with a, a clean paint brush because it's easier to, it's easy to clean out. Um, let's see. Where were we? There, oh, yep, that is where we are. Clark Finer said, that Derwent brush looks different. I have one that was sent. It's blue with a, a push button. The water comes out too much at once. That one doesn't have like a, no, this doesn't have a button at all. This one, you just squeeze the little plasticky guys back here. So I hope they didn't redesign them because I really like these ones. Um, I've got different numbers too. Like here's a bigger one. You can see it's got a much bigger brush, but they come in different sizes. Um, no button. <coughs> Back to work. So yeah, that shell piece, I'm having so much fun working on. Like I cannot, I don't know if I'm gonna finish it tonight. So this is my, this is my personal dilemma. It has to be done by Saturday. So I can either finish it tonight um, or finish it Saturday. My in-laws are coming for my husband's birthday. They're coming this week, like not on his birthday, but they're coming because of his birthday. Um, on Monday. Monday was when I was planning to paint my dining room. So in order to paint my dining room, I have to rearrange everything. So like tomorrow I was supposed to be cleaning the house or I could clean the house tonight and then paint the room tomorrow instead of Monday. And that gets me, and, and I can finish this then tomorrow night or I could finish this tonight, clean the house tomorrow night and paint the house tomorrow day. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out the order I want to do stuff in, but the, or not finish this, but the shell, the shell, I only need a few more hours, I think, to finish it. But it has been one of the most enjoyable projects. Like, oh, the contrast with that, that background was the hard part. Like the shell itself is not really hard as long as you work slow and really pay attention to the reference photo. That background was just, it took a, a quite a few, like I want to say four or five layers to get that level of, like, of not color saturation, but darkness. Um, thanks, Artistic Flower. Clark Fine Art said, thanks, I'll have to look into those. I've been trying to find some of that type of brush I really like. If they don't have it, you can check into the Faber-Castell one. I don't think I have it over here. Faber-Castell one is green and it's skinny. And, oh wait, I do. Here's my Faber-Castell one. I think that is the Faber-Castell. Yeah, this one is. Um, so I'll show you the difference in size there. So it's a lot smaller. It's kind of a weird, um, and I don't know if they have other, does it say what size? I think that's just kind of a one size, but there's dog hair on it. Um, classy. So the bristle's okay. As soon as I open it, it's squeezing out water. I don't know if that was, definitely seems to have more water come out, but you squeeze the squishy back end of it to get water out. It works fine. The bristles are softer. That's what it was. I knew there was something I, wait, hold on. So that one. Yeah, I think the brish, bristles felt, they're kind of similar, but the bristles just felt a little bit softer with that one. I don't know. They, I mean, they both work, but if you can't find something in Derwent that does that, you may want to check the Faber-Castell one. I don't, like I said, I don't like it as much. I tend to reach for, these are just more comfortable in my hand. I really like the, those ones. Um, let's see. Snow said, it's funny, I have like three brands water or water brushes and one I keep using the most is Faber-Castell Travel Medium Water Brush. Just have the best water flow. See, and everyone's gonna have their preferences. So even if I'm like, this is the best supply, you should get this one. You're really gonna have to try stuff on your own because you something else may work better because your technique, everyone's techniques are gonna be slightly different, even if you're trying to copy someone else. So you may find something that just works better for you. And the only way you're gonna find out is by trying them. Mildred said, yay, my husband has a December birthday too. He wants to go to Meow Wolf for, what is that? Meow Wolf for his birthday, but we are waiting a month because of all the holiday traffic. I don't know what that is. 
that had a birthday. JPC1300 said, Pentel makes my favorite water brushes. Oh, I've not tried that. They don't suck up the paint, at least in my experience, like the Derwent ones do. Oh, interesting. I'll have to look into that. Cardfighter said, thanks. I'll be checking out the Derwent ones. Let me know if you're not. I'm curious now because, like, I always recommend those. It'll be interesting if I find out you can't even get that anymore. Oh, hey, look, more spam. That's a shocker. Hold on. Oh, and I don't know when it came, but I missed the text from Nick letting me know. I had the MeWe code up still. <laughs> Whoops. Um, hold on, let me block this before it continues. Oh my gosh, I'm... There too. Block. Block. So annoying. Okay. I don't even know anyone in Illinois. No one that would be calling me anyway. Um, let's see. <laughs> Miss Bell Jared says, I'll bow for I have arrived. <laughs> Miss Bell Jared's a freaking Disney princess, according to himself. He has a video over on MeWe where he's out there, like, uh, he t um, takes care of pools and stuff, like, people's pools, cleans them or whatever. And he's sitting there holding his finger up, calling this little wild bird who's hopping around. It looks like an Eastern Phoebe. I don't know, something like that. Well, a similar look. I don't know if that's what it was, but it looks kind of like that. And my brush is on the floor. Um, anyway, calls the bird. Bird flies up and lands on his finger. What in the, okay, Snow White. Um, I'm sure that'd be spelled wrong too though. Uh, let's see. Gail said, Derwent has indeed redone their brushes with buttons. Ew. I have Karen Dosh water ones with buttons, harder barrel, and doesn't suck the paint in as much. I don't think I'd want buttons. Now I'm going to have to be all protective of the ones I have because I love mine. Do they still have the old ones? Hold on. I'll look really quick. Um. There's Arteza. They look like Faber Castell. Oh, I see the Dur Derwent one. Okay, you can still get the good ones though. Um, so they do have the push button ones cost more. I mean, I've not used them, so I'm all getting an attitude. Ew, that's terrible. But I've not even used them. But the Derwent still has the original ones on, at least on Amazon. So that's good. Um, oops, that just jumped. Hobby artist said, when I get my giveaway painting, I'll send you. My medium Pentel water brush I'm not using. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, your painting is still sitting back there. It's not even varnished. Actually, did I put the first coat of varnish on yours? I might have. They all need, some of them need the first coat. Some of them need the second coat. I have a whole batch that I need to send. Snow said, I think my second favorite are the Karen Dosh ones, but those are expensive, but great ones. The felt tip is one, uh, one is great when I use watercolor crayons. I may have to check out theirs. I never really thought of putting too much time or effort into finding different water. You know what? I need to write that down too because I'm going to go shopping for art supplies and I will forget. Um, I've got two of the dart frogs are going back and forth trying to out sing each other right now. Um... Let's see. Hobby art. Okay, got that one. Snow said, I think my second. Oh, got that one. Mildred said, Meow Wolf has these giant permanent interactive surrealistic art inst installations. There are three different ones in the U.S. now. Oh, wow. Miss Bill Jared said it did it three multiple times. Yeah. Snow White, like S N U O U O W W H Y T E. Snow White. Um. Brian said, uh, why do you continue to use that same color for the outline instead of colors that would be more suitable for the objects? I know the picture will come out looking different when it does. So these are all just my shadows. These are just my lines. Other colors are going to go on top of this. So this is just like my base shadows, if that makes sense. Like I'm still going to put brown on top of that and then I'll still put black on top where needed. Or here we'll get some peaches and some pinks. But these are my darker colors that will sit underneath the glazes I'll be putting on top. And well, yeah, I could switch colors. This is just faster and easier to keep doing it in the same one. So part is by being, e just making it easier. And part is it, it will look good. And, the, like it, and it pulls everything together nicely. So, you know, we did this as a collage of multiple 
images by all of these having this base shadow that's pretty much the same that I don't know if I want this outlined though maybe around the bottom a little bit by having this base outline that's about the same it's one of the things that will help pull everything like make them feel like they go together okay and not everything needs an outline though that's the other thing the pearls debating on if I want to outline them at all I guess it could because well if I do I'm gonna mix a lot of water with it um Karina said I have lost two computers and one laptop in two years I'm now down to watching you on my iPad I'm having bad luck with the, my device's own oh, no, hole I'm sorry Gypsy Heart said all you have to do is give him crap um crap with that is say white with emphasis on the h he hates that white white he hates that oh i don't know where i'm feeding you this information and not sorry <laughs> snow white <laughs> oh my gosh um brian said like cool and warm undertones yeah i'm not even going that far um oh yeah bell bell has a good uh, pronoun uh spelling p-s-y-n-o-e-w-h-y-t-e that is how misspelled jared would spell it for sure um, that's perfect. But I wouldn't even say cool and warm undertones. I'm not even taking it that far. This is super simplified. Like I'm giving this really easy, um, really basic. You're, you'll see when I layer over it, you're not even going to see most of what I'm doing right now, but this is going to keep them in place because when I start doing my base layers, sometimes they get kind of messy, but I'll still be able to see these lines through it. Normally when I've done this, I'll use, I'll just use black, even though it doesn't end up looking like black in the end. I just need something there and most of these colors are light enough. I really don't want black. Holy crap, those frogs are louder than usual today. I'm not sure what they're all talkative about. Both of them, I can hear one will start and the other one tr starts trilling right after. There's technically three in there, but the girl doesn't talk. There's a not like humans joke in there that's gonna offend somebody. I'm making it anyway, not like people. <laughs> I'm so gonna get somebody who gets all offended about that because that's been like the thing it has been amazed me lately people who either try to take me out of context now that is one of the things that actually really annoys me um like you're trying on you're making having to make a serious effort to misunderstand me in that but that or just people lately have been I don't know why people are being so overly sensitive in everything I say like, there will be somebody who is offended by ridiculous things. Um, you know, and the worst thing about that, knowing, and I'll definitely tell Matt too, they're moving to my area, so he's going to have to listen to us constantly pronounce the H in, thing, in like what and those sorts of things regularly. This is good. This will be fun. Although, again, maybe I should not make fun of the author whose books I read. It's a weird amount of power an author has in that, isn't it? Brian said, it's all good. You're a bunch of... You're a bunch of hairy turtles here watching you. What? Oh, we're a bunch of hairy turtles. Oh, I like animals more than people too. <laughs> hairy turtles. I've not heard that, that phrase before. Starving Artist Collective said, True thing, saw the discovery this week of three new frog species in the screaming and bleeding tree frogs category. Have you ever heard of this category? First time for me? No, I don't know. That's crazy. I'm interested now. Gypsy Heart said, Yes, he called me on the way home and asked how much he was allowed to have as an allowance to buy the blood and bone cards or whatever they're called. <laughs> it's okay. Set him an allowance. Let me tell you, Matt will spend... Matt was mad at me for buying house paint because I painted my living room. He was like, I don't understand why you spent that. Like, we're supposed to, we need to save money. 
things aren't amazing right now economy wise things are getting more expensive and he was mad i spent money to paint the house and i'm like how many of your blood and bone card things have you bought lately like you don't understand why i wanted to change a wall color i don't understand why you needed all those cards so you know if we're going to be fair we need it but i try to get him like we should have an allowance so no one's mad at the other person on how much money they spent on things the other person is like that's stupid but he doesn't want to set an allowance i think he just wants to be able to spend whenever he wants to spend it but yeah, I, I've tried for years to set, like, we need to have, like, you get this much money a month to spend on your fun stuff, and no one can judge you for it. But And then you can save. If you wanted a big thing, you could save up if we had allowances. But he doesn't want to do it. I don't know why. Uh, Clark Finder said, yeah, you never know what he can write for your character. Ugh. That's terrifying. It already sounds not flattering, that's for sure. Ryan said, um, the frogs in the background singing is freaking my dog out. <laughs> like if my smoke alarm is chirping, oh no. Gosh, my girls, when I had my Italian greyhounds, Echo was terrified of that smoke alarm. Like she freaked out so bad. We were, so at the time we were living with my in-laws and the alarm went off and neither me or my father-in-law could get because he's got a messed up back and then i'm just i've got my own issues and my back problem we couldn't get the ladder that was big enough to get to the ceilings and where it was going off was super tall we had to wait for matt to get home and the dogs his dog he had a chihuahua mix at the time and i had my two italian greyhounds echo was so echo and the chihuahua mix were so freaked out about the sound they're trying to hide outside we're like trying to make them as comfortable as possible but it was making them insane and then we thought we got it taken care of but from that point on when i got a new video camera that i was recording with whenever you push like would make it play so this was god this was a long time ago you would make it record it make a beep sound it doesn't sound at all like the alarm but it didn't matter she behaved like it did and would start panicking and freaking out and i'm like oh my gosh so i got to for a while i had to put her in her her crate was huge like it was a, a german shepherd size crate is what my girls had because they shared it and it was just it was their den with all their blankets and stuff but i'd have to put her in there to keep her calm until she like it took months for her to stop freaking out every time i pushed record on that camera gypsy aircraft said we do a 50 50 50 uh 50 me 50 him 50 savings every week it really helps yeah i can't get Matt to do that i like he doesn't want to sit down and come up with it, it seems like he thinks he's going to spend more and he'll save more if he doesn't do that well it, it, that's what he's always said well i just shouldn't spend money okay but we know that's not what's going to happen so um let's then do that you know said when the seashell is done you should include it as part of your merch just a thought yeah if you guys like that i can certainly make prints and stuff of it i'm the the, the black and white one or i'm yeah i'm guessing not this one but um yeah i'm really liking that artistic flower said why does everyone misspell jared's name we're gonna have to talk to his mom about that one yeah, because it's actually spelled J-A-R-R-Y-D. So I just started joking like, that's not how you spell Jared. So I started calling him Miss Spell Jared. And now it's, we, we ran with it. And luckily he has a good sense of humor. So he's not actually offended because somebody's going to be offended for him. Just stop. We know him. It's fine. Um, gosh. No matter, and it's never the people who are watching in the live stream. It's always somebody later on messages me. My favorite are the novel. When someone takes the time to write a novel, mi completely misunderstanding what I said, but being offended by it because they misunderstood it. Like, I can't help that you don't understand. I don't know how to help you in this. <laughs> like, I can't make you understand. Um, anyway, it's it's been a lot lately. Like, a lot of people have been reacting. Odd there is something in the air right now. I'm telling you, we go. it's almost like there's seasons where people are more, which makes sense. I think people are just stressed with the holidays and stuff, but it's like, yeah, Cheryl said, I absolutely love watching you. You've taught me so much. Oh, I just got my first ink tents and Golden's watercolor. I love the new mediums. Thank you for all you've done for us. Oh, nice. Oh, Golden's watercolor. Tell me how those go. I haven't tried those. Karina said, I have to apologize for getting upset about my name last week. I was being su Suki? Suki. I don't know what that is. I'm not normally that sensitive. I feel, felt stupid later. I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. 
you know, we all, I'm telling you, it's something in this, like, I don't know if it's the holidays or what, because even me, I responded to this one girl when I was basically like, I can't help that you're, you've decided to misunderstand what I said. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to delete it. I'm being, I'm being rude as well. Like, just because she's having a bad time doesn't mean I should also react or lash out. And so I just feel like it's got to be like, it's a, it's ugly outside. It's cold. Well, it's not cold here right now, but my trees are bald. It's ugly. We're all moody. I think that's what's happening right now. Um, let's see. Also, Karina, I so appreciate that you talked that out instead of just getting mad at me. Like, I love that. Um, cause we all have our days. It happens. And you didn't just like get mad and stay mad. Like you're like, Oh, Let's talk this up. It's cool. I like it. Um, Artistic Flower said, it's just joking around. I don't know why people are getting offended. <laughs> Tara said, oh, people are just great, great. Lately, yeah, it's um, like there's, like I said, there was a girl this morning I was, I was talking, and she was actually very nice in how she worded it, but she was intentional. Like, you're going to pull a muscle trying to misunderstand what I said that hard. Like, don't hurt your brain. That, that's not what I said. So why are you making, you're, you're reading more into what I said and then like applying your own. But I think what happens is we get into like, actually, I'll just explain what happened. Um, in this one case, we, I was talking and I've talked about this before with college and, and whatever. And she took it as I was saying, anyone who went to college was a bad artist. I have never said that because it's not true. I don't believe it. Why would I say that? So I think what happens is people are used to hearing that. And so they assume when someone says something that that's what they meant. And it's like, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I said. Don't assume what I meant. And I'm over here. I get overly offended when some, when I feel like somebody is, it's almost like lying. Like you're intentionally mis, I didn't say that. Don't put words in my mouth because that is not what I said. So I think it was one of those where everyone's just in a, a like, I think it's the weather. I'm telling you, it's ugly outside. It's ugly here right now. I'm like, I'm going back to my tree is bald and it upsets me. It's, I hate this time of year. So I'm thinking it's that. Clark Finer said, do you have any Daniel Smith watercolors? I don't. Also, Q-O-R are the golden watercolors there at the top of my watercolor want list. I don't know on that either. I don't have that. Um, Gypsy Art said, Jared says, no, this is what I said. I don't know what you think you heard me say, but it's what I said. And it's always confuses them. So they walk away. Yeah, and I'm not even saying that the person, like she was actually very nice. I think I was being the more snippy one. Like her words were nice, but she was also implying, like trying to tell me what, how she basically misunderstood. Stood in and it's like, you're intentionally trying to misunderstand that. I'm not going to apologize because you chose to be offended by something I never said. And it, it, I, that's, I think you get people where it's like, I'm prone to being offended if I feel like somebody's lying about what I said. She's expecting people to say something negative about artists who went to college, even though I didn't say that. So I will talk bad about college, but not artists who going to college doesn't mean you're a good or a bad artist. It has very little to do with how successful you are. You are. So it's very odd. Uh, Belle said, I think she was offended by your tone. I was totally thinking, where did she get that idea? Yeah, I don't know. I even went back and watched um, the video because I'm like, did I say something that really came out wrong? I'm like, how? I don't know how you got that from that. So again, it goes back to, I think so often people have a tendency just to make assumptions based on, I'm used to be like people, like for me, people are constantly complaining I talk too fast. So I tend to be more short when people complain that I talk too fast. I'm like... And it may be as simple as that. Like you hear it all the time and you just roll your eyes and you're like, really? And so I can be snippier when somebody maybe is just making the comment without trying to be rude, you know, but I assume they're being rude because it happens so often. So I think it's it's more a case like that. And even in my case, I, re I removed the one comment where, because I did get snippy because I'm like, I can't help what you, and then I was like, I'm being the, I, I'm doing the same thing now. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm complaining about that person doing. I'm doing the same thing. Um, yeah, we do. Well, the sun is looking kind of cool coming through the window there. I hate though when the sun is in this position when it's down. I just find it to be slow. Like I don't really struggle with depression, but it always makes me feel a little just blah. Like I hate when it looks pretty on the camera. It doesn't look as pretty in here. I hate when the sun is low. Uh, Karina said, I admire you too much to get made, uh, made and hold a grudge. Oh, good. Um... 
Miss Mel just Miss Mel Snow White uh, <laughs> said I'm offended. You know what? I don't even know how to change my name. Like, well, I mean, I can't because it's my business name, but I wouldn't even know how you know to change your name constantly like that. Misspelled Jared. Or misspelled Snow White. Those frogs are getting so loud, it starts to get your ear where you're like, oh, that's like so high pitched. Um. It's so cute listening to those frogs chirp, like how one will start and the other goes back and forth. They're adorable. So I don't care if any of this is perfect on the wood grain. Actually, it's part of it's off camera. I'm just doing some lines for where that is going to go. And I need to see, am I even on the... Yeah, that is about right. It looks like it's lopsided, but it's pretty close. That's gonna mostly fade out anyway though, so whatever. So I can use this now and do some light shading around the vase or the, the candle. So same color. Gypsy Hard said, uh, what's that, boy, what's the phrase to get what you want? I'm offended, that's right, yeah. I'm offended or call people like the worst thing you can think of someone as being, call them that. Because you can't argue some of these things that people are like, I'll just say this about you. And then I think that's where I get annoyed too. I mean, it's kind of that same thing where people just make assumptions and it's almost worse than name calling. Like, I didn't even say that. How could you get that from what I said? So next week, this is, we're in a pretty good spot. So we're at about three o'clock. We'll go ahead and wrap this up. But this next week we start with the background and putting the color in. So we'll wrap this up. I'll go wait for somebody to rewatch this video and get offended because it's that time of year. Apparently it is the year or the time of year. It's the season for being offended for, um, I am not talking about you, Karina. Now that I say that, I'm like, please don't take that the wrong way. I'm actually talking about the person from this morning. Nothing to do with you. Um, let's see. Um, Eo said, I also live in the North Pole and it's cloudy more often than not in the winter and seeing the sun coming through your window is so nice. Yeah, I don't think I could handle living in the North Pole. Your snow is beautiful. I do not think... But then on the flip side, that's part of what bugs me. Like my lawn is brown. Everything goes dormant. It's brown. The trees are bald. Snow is at least pretty. I really dislike. Yeah, I love Texas. I hate this time. Of year. I mean, it was the same California. Everything goes dormant and not super cute. Um, Karina said, sorry, Lisa, my grammar and spelling are terrible. Glad you can work out what I'm trying to say with my dyslexia. Oh, my spelling would not be good if it weren't for auto check or spell check. Although, so what really bugs me, my so my neighbor is a English teacher. She is a, like, really big on all the spelling stuff. So, um, I don't remember what I said to her, but it auto changed the word to be misspelled. Like, it changed it from what I had it right, and it changed it, and she was making fun of me, and I looked up like, what the heck? And I showed her, because you know how it does the auto predict. I'm like, look, it wants me to use this word. What the heck? That's not... Yeah, Thank, thanks, autocorrect. Um, Artistic Clara said, not being mean, but the frogs chirping sound like sirens. It's worse in person. Normally, I love it, but every once in a while, they do what they're doing right now, where it's loud, like that right there. It kind of is like, oh, I've got to leave this room. Nails on the chalkboard. It's, it's, a, it's a bit much right now. They're, they're trying to talk over each other, I think. They're really trying to get the girl. They're, they're competing over which boy the girl will want. So... Um, we've got, yes, I am with you. I, I understand completely. Miss Bell Snow White, and normally I love it, but there's every once in a while, they, they hit this pitch where I'm like, oh, it's a little much. Um, Miss Bell Snow White said, see, the stream understands me. <laughs> Brian said, I don't think they forget. I'm sure it's purpose to irritate others. Possibly. Um, certainly possible. 
Uh, where are we? We'll get caught up on this and wrap this up. George, uh, is that right? Yeah, George said, do the frogs know to be quiet when you're trying to sleep? Well, they sleep at night. Luckily, they're not nocturnal. My red-eye tree frogs are all nocturnal. These guys are not. So if it's dark, actually, I'd say if it's dark, it's quiet. But sometimes just ambient room light, they'll still be like, nope, we're still singing. We still want, they're very... They're like rabbits in their breeding habits and they're this is what they're they're trying to attract the female. That's why you're hearing what you're hearing. So they're um yeah, they're in the mood. So no more wine for them before the live stream. But they I'm kidding. I did not give my I'm kidding. But yeah, somebody's gonna take that seriously, inevitably. Um yeah, they're and luckily there so they i will hear them i sleep with earplugs in and i can still hear them my room is on the other end of the house they're here in the studio and i will still hear them through and it's it's dim but i can still hear them when i wake up in the mornings they've been going they don't wake me up but i can hear it uh gypsy heron said just tell them they're the human equivalent of a participation trophy and move on <laughs> Shelly said, I had a long Polish name as a child that no one could pronounce. I got over being offended decades ago. <laughs> uh, Phyllis said, are you almost finished? I need to put a comment that I'm offended just to figure out what I'm offended of. <laughs> Susan said, I think the word is wrapped in, a, in gloomy. Gloomy is the word. I'm offended. <laughs> no, gloomy is the word I was thinking of earlier. That's what it felt. Well, now the sun's coming through, but the way the setting, and I know that's not what you're talking about, but gloomy is the word I was trying to think of earlier. Um, I think the word is wrapped in a gloomy, I'm offended cloud. Yes, that works. And also, thank you for reminding me the word gloomy in general, because I could not remember it earlier. Um, okay, we are, it's 3.06. We are, we are done. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. So we've got the layout is there these colors will all be dry they'll all dry in like or um, permanent so they'll smudge very very little if at all so when i start going through especially in the background because the background is very dark if i get some of that background color on my seahorse i'm still going to be able to see most of these lines through there so that's kind of the goal because when i blend i will end up blending inevitably over these subjects even where i don't really want it to be because I hate masking fluid and I don't want to bother with it. So by having lined this today, those lines are going to stay put. I'm going to be able to see them. And you may think, well, why don't you just draw it in graphite in the first place? If I would have drawn it with graphite, even regular graphite, some of the darker colors, it would still be too hard to see. Um, and then some of the lighter colors, it would show through where I didn't want it. Had I drawn it with ink tents, ink tents, if you use the pencil on the paper, it will always reactivate somewhat when you go on top. Whereas this won't. This is going to stay put. So those are those are our reasons. Thank you guys for joining. You can check out our moderators channels. They've all got all four of them now have art channels. Links are in the video description. We've got Joseph, Nick, uh, Clark Fine Art, and Gypsy Heart Art Craft and Art Art Craft. Misspelled Jared's wife. Um, they are their links to their channels are in the video description. So help them out. Subscribe. Watch this. They've, they've got good videos. So there's that. Follow me over on Miwi. Miwi dot com slash p slash la cree is follow my art page. I, I think that's my, I don't know. Yes, that's my page. Um, all the links are in the video description and I will see you guys. Well, I'll be posting on MeWe this week. I will, I, we'll see when I get this finished. And then I'll also post photos when I finish painting the house. If you wanted to see what I've been painting in my living room, dining room. Anyway, that is it. Thank you guys for joining and I will see you. The next video will be here Tuesday. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting. It's, we're going with that. Bye. Bye.